Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second face-to-face -face meeting for the MAG and open consultations. Today is the first day of the MAG meeting. Just a reminder, the open consultations are going to happen tomorrow. Um, so MAG has preference today. Um, before we start the meeting, just a quick reminder, we'll be using the uh, speaking queue as usual and when you speak can you please speak slowly more slower than I speak and um, when you say your name also say it uh, very slowly just for the scribes so that they can um, get your name uh, properly uh, with that and also you know the transcription is going to be posted and um, the meeting is recorded as well and it's um, on YouTube and it's webcast um, with that, with that um, let me hand it over to Lynn, um, the MAG Chair, to open the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Changatai, and welcome, everybody. I'm sure um, everybody is, is trying to juggle their schedules across their WISIS activities and the um, MAG activities as well, but I certainly hope that as a MAG member we're pri prioritizing the um, the uh, MAG activities. Having said that, I know there are various individuals that need to step out for speaking roles and and various things. So we appreciate the opportunity to participate deeply in the WAT in the um, WISIS activities as well. But again, do hope we have um, good participation over the course of the three days here for the for the MAG meeting because this is a, an important an important um, meeting, focusing mostly on some of the more strategic issues. Um, our first order of business is to walk through the agenda and approve the agenda. Um, it was posted um, a few weeks ago. Um, I think it's going to come up on the screen there in a minute. Um, again, we approve the agenda day by day, so today we're approving um, just the agenda for today. I'll give everybody a moment to pull it up or refresh their minds again and see if there are any comments, suggestions, or any other items for AOB, any other business. There's some puzzling looks. Is the sound working or is there other? Okay. <laughs> So I'd like to call for approval of the agenda then. Seeing no objections. So um, just um, briefly here, the purpose of this second meeting, and we're fortunate this year in that um, with the early announcement of Berlin hosting um, the IGF and with the um, very timely appointment of the MAG and the MAG chair mm -hmm. that we're able to fit in three meetings which it actually is allowing us to dedicate much of this meeting, in fact most of this meeting, to um, some of the more strategic areas and um, areas of, of improvement. So that's what we'll be focusing on today. We'll have some more um, words as we actually get to that, to that um, agenda item. The at our last face-to-face -face meeting, we actually focused pretty significantly on taking to heart the various suggestions for improvements that we'd heard, whether that's through the CSTD Working Group on IGF Improvements, the taking stock activities that happen regularly and annually through the IGF process, um, or the DESA retreat, and in particular, um, focused on having a really cohesive, focused agenda for this MAG meeting. Um, with the three main themes, as I know you're all all um, very well aware. Um, we also made efforts to ensure that we were tying the intersessional activities to a lot of those themes and works as well, particularly through the approval of the four best practice forums. Um, and we continue to work, and the MAG at the last meeting um, very um, specifically um, identified the need to increase collaboration with all of the intersessional activities, so certainly the best practice forums, which in fact are, are led by the MAG, but also all the dynamic coalitions. Um, if we should choose to have a major intersessional policy program, um, that one as well. And of course, to increase collaboration with the national, regional, and youth IGF initiatives, which are such a critical part of our, of our eco ecosystem. So today, we want to focus on continuing this kind of focus on 
what are the improvements we're looking at and take a, a high level, longer term view. That will be the bulk of the day. And then um, later in the day, we'll focus on um, some updates from the host country and um, uh, some updates from the, the Secretariat as well. And then tomorrow, I think just of note, as I've had an awful lot of comments and questions the last few days, we will actually have a, an additional agenda item at the end of the day, which is um, an address from, uh, I think it's going to be Jovan, but somebody from um, the UN's high-level panel on digital cooperation, the HLPDC. Um, so that will be at 5 o'clock tomorrow, and we'll make sure that that agenda is updated online as well so that everybody is aware of that certainly those here physically, but also those participating participating online, because I know that's of, of high interest to the community here. Um, so with that, um, we will introduce the other uh, members of the, the panel, and we will have some opening comments, um, initially from uh, Denise Suzar, who's with UN DESA um, out of New York. And as you're all aware, um, the IGF, uh, DESA is the administrative home of the IGF. And then we'll have um, opening remarks as well from uh, Dr. Daniela Brunstrup, who, of course, is the host country co-chair for our IGF this year. So, Dennis, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Dennis Susash uh, from the Digital Government Branch uh, of the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs. Uh, I'm delivering this statement on behalf of Mr. Zhuang Xu, who is the director of the Division uh, for Public Institutions and Digital Government. Uh, he is appointed as the director of our division as of 1st of March. And uh, in the management, uh, we don't foresee any uh, change in the near future. Uh, Mr. Stefan Schweinfest, with whom you met, uh, he, uh, he moved back to the Statistics Division. But he will be uh, also supporting us for the upcoming uh, German IGF as needed. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for your important participation at this second meeting and uh, tomorrow's open consultation. Uh, as Lynn mentioned, uh, we also extend appreciation uh, for the work of MAC so far uh, and selection of the 2019 teams, uh, data governance, digital inclusion, security, safety, and uh, stability and resilience. Uh, these teams are very timely and in line with uh, other global agendas. For example, uh, the Secretary General's strategy on new technologies uh, mentions that broad and inclusive dialogues and cooperation with all actors are required uh, to address the challenge of inequality within and between nations uh, brought by new technologies. Also, as you know, a uh, high-level panel on digital cooperation uh, is expected to contribute to the uh, broader public debate uh, on how to ensure a safe and inclusive digital uh, future for all. Uh, a few words about the administrative process. Uh, as was the case last year, uh, we plan to launch the 2020 renewal of the MAC uh, earlier in 2019. Uh, so as to allow new members to have a full year's term and, most importantly, to ensure a, a fully renewed MAC in place uh, to begin the work of planning the 15th annual meeting by 29 November, by the end of the uh, Berlin IGF. We are also in the process of identifying the host of the 15th IGF in, for 2020. Uh, the decision will be made in the coming weeks and hopefully before or around uh, the third MAC meeting. Uh, also, let me recall the uh, terms of the reference uh, of MAC members that the purpose of the MAC is uh, to advise the Secretary General on the program and schedule of the IGF meetings, taking note of global trends, uh, developments, engagement with stakeholders and organizations worldwide at all levels and, of course, listening to the needs of the community. Uh, in that regard, uh, just please allow me to quickly remind you the SG's recommendations from the 2018 IGF. Uh, first, how can the IGF be more uh, multidisciplinary? Uh, we cannot ignore the fact that uh, as the Internet brings the world closer, there are also more silos and more divides. And recalling the SG's statement, how can we bring in philosophers 
anthropologist, political and social scientist to the IGF platform. Second, uh, the need to create shared language, reference, propose new approaches. Uh, in that regard, we need input from dynamic coalitions, uh, NRIs, and uh, of course, along with other suggestions. And third, uh, the Secretary General also underlined that IGF must increase its efforts uh, to include weak and missing voices. So uh, how can we reach out to those uh, currently uh, outside of the IGF community? Uh, related to these recommendations, uh, the, two, the IGF 2019 host country, uh, Government of Germany, uh, will support eligible candidates from developing countries to participate at the annual meeting in Berlin. And also, it will also support the participation of the MAG members at the MAG meetings and annual meetings. Uh, there will be a call for applications, and the Secretariat will share details later. Uh, we really express thanks to the generosity of the government of Germany, uh, not only supporting the hosting uh, in Berlin, but also contributing to the Global South Fund uh, to boost participation of stakeholders from developing regions and countries. Uh, we feel lucky with our new host, uh, and uh, as such, uh, they deserve our 100% dedication, and we trust all MAG members that they will do uh, their best to make the Berlin IGF meaningful, uh, not only to their communities, but to everyone in the world. And a few words on capacity development. Uh, in DESA, we place special emphasis uh, especially for all stakeholders in countries in special situations, including least developed countries, small island developing states, uh, and landlocked uh, developing countries. Uh, the IGF Secretariat will step up its efforts in providing capacity development, especially to the regional IGFs, national and youth IGFs, uh, and to those IGF initiatives starting up or uh, planning to convene its first meeting in 2019. Again, you will hear further details from the Secretariat how the German funds will be used in that regard. Uh, in working alongside with the regional commissions, DESA will also reach out uh, to support the regional IGFs, uh, including the Africa IGF, Asia Pacific IGF, Arab IGF, Latin American and Caribbean IGF, and the Eurodic. Uh, in looking forward, I mean, 2019 uh, is a significant year, as it's the first time high-level political forum on uh, sustainable development will be held during ECOSOC annual session in July, but also during the General Assembly. And also, we will hear from the high-level panel on digital cooperation with its report very soon, and we should respond effectively to the outcomes of this report. Uh, and also in about the outreach and communication efforts uh, are also less than desired and much more could be done by UNDESA, by the Secretariat and also by UMAC. Uh, uh, to conclude, uh, let me thank again to Germany, current donors, and invite new institutions and governments and private sector to contribute to the IGF Trust Fund. And, uh, DESA pledged its full support to the MAC, and uh, we wish you a free field MAC meeting and open consultation tomorrow. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Dennis. Um, and just a moment, I'd like to thank and recognize Stefan Schweinwest for stepping in um, and um, fulfilling this role over the last year or so, and at the same time, uh, welcome Zhuang Zhu back where, in fact, the IGF was under his leadership for many years, um, out of the sort of 13 years we hear, maybe all but one or two. So um, while he's coming back into this position effective March 1st, um, he certainly has a long history and um, a great familiarity with the IGF. So I think we're fortunate that um, he was able to, to come back into that role. So thank you, Dennis. Mm -hmm. And now? Dr. Daniela Brunstrup, who is the host, honorary host country co-chair, um, welcome to give some opening remarks. Thank you, Lynn, and also thank you, Dennis, for the kind words. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would also like to welcome you to the second physical MAG meeting, face the face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, I'm very glad and honored to be here again. 
Um, I'm here just to say a few words on the preparations in Berlin. Um, they are making progress, and that's also thanks to a lot of uh, stakeholder groups. Thank you to those who are offering their help to us and who are already very much involved in our preparation process. You know that uh, our Chancellor, Angela Merkel, has very much from the beginning been uh, engaged in the process and is uh, really um, yeah, campaigning for the IGF in Berlin. Um, she has also decided to uh, give the opening remarks at the IGF in Berlin now. And, and we believe that the fact that we have high-ranking people at the IGF will raise awareness also in the broader public. And you know I al already told that last time, this is one of our aims, really to uh, get new stakeholders on board, to uh, strengthen the multi-stakeholder approach of the IGF, which is in our view key. And that also means that we should give any effort to get those groups on board. We very much hope that the UN Secretary General will accept the invitation of Chancellor Merkel to come to the IGF as well. I ask the members and our colleagues at the UN to help to make this possible. That would be a great honor for Germany, and I think it would be a very good signal also uh, about the importance of the IGF. What are we especially intending to do? We are planning to hold a high-level meeting on day zero with the civil society, with business community, with other governments, with the technical community, to have really all stakeholders at a high-ranking level on board. Federal Minister Peter Altmaier will send out invitations very soon. The invitations are, are written on his desk. He will just sign now and then send them around. Um, we are seeing a lot of interest in this. So there will be all sorts of interesting proposals. Um, I would like to thank all of those who have already shown interest in particip participating in uh, developing an interesting program for day zero. Um, I would also like to thank very much uh, all of you who have been engaged in um, yeah, developing uh, the call for workshops. I think there was a lot of progress done during the last meeting and after the last meeting. Um, thank you for that. On the last day of the IGF in Berlin, that will be the, second, uh, the 29th of November, we are planning a meeting of parliamentarians. I um, announced that already a little bit last time, and um, this is now much more concrete. We have a committee on, uh, on the digital agenda of our uh, Bundestag. And this committee has designed, uh, des decided to invite parliamentarians from all over the world to come to that meeting to get input to their daily work from the IGF. I think this is an important signal uh, also to make uh, the discussions at the IGF much more relevant also between IGF meetings. Dennis already mentioned um, our Global South Fund. I just want to recall that uh, we gave resources to make possible that representatives of the Global South who have been underrepresented so far can come to Berlin. I just want to recall Germany and the federal government of Germany are really wanting an open, free, and truly global internet. Um, this means that everyone can participate on an equal basis. And we would be very happy to have that also shown in the motto of the IGF 2019. We are thinking about a motto like, for example, one world, one web, one vision, shaping together the future of the net. Because in our view, that would show uh, that this is an important debate after decades of having the internet, now looking into the future, um, discussing together what kind of internet we would like to see for the next years and decades, and to shape that together. Thank you very much. Lynn already mentioned that um, the MAC meeting, of course, is a priority for me, but I have the honor also to speak at the WISIS, and that's why I will leave the session in about an hour, for about an hour, but then I will be back. And I, I apologize for that.
Thank you so much. Thank you, Daniela. Um, we are going to be using the queue, but I see Veni Markovsky from the back of the Thank you, Lynn and I am in the queue. And you are in the queue. I just hadn't looked Being up Being a good MAG member. I've already got a neck ache. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Veni. You have the floor. Hi, everyone, um, and welcome to Geneva. We have lovely weather. For those of you who are participating remotely and are thinking it's raining or something. I have a question to uh, the co-chair. Uh, the, the day, the 29th of November, that you say there will be a parliamentary meeting, are the IGF participants invited? Is it going to be open, or is it going to be only for members of uh, uh, parliament? And if you haven't heard it, I can repeat it. No. Okay. We do not know yet. I mean, I would say preferably it sh should be open, at least partly open. But um, we haven't decided, or at least our parliamentarians haven't decided so far, so we will get into talks to the, with them. Thank you, Veni and Daniela. Ben Wallace, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn, um, and good morning, everyone. And uh, firstly, just to remark that the the comments from both um, Dennis and Daniela um, strike a very encouraging um, and tone with lots of momentum. Um, we seem like this is my second year in the MAG, so compared to last year, the progress seems um, very well advanced and very welcome. Um, and it, it, taking the one example, and this is my question for Dennis, um, it's amazing to hear that um, we could have the, the host for next year already announced. Um, by the time we meet together in June. Um, and I wondered whether um, that would be the announcement of the, the host country and the date, or just the host country, and the date becomes a, a matter for discussion or decision later. Thank you. Changitayo, Dennis. Dennis? Okay. Uh, uh, as mentioned, initially we are trying to identify the host country and the date will follow that. I don't know anything about the date yet. I fully understand that the sooner you know them, the better for planning. So as soon as we know them, we'll make them available. Arsene, you have the floor. Still trying to figure out where everybody is in the room. If they're here, there you are. <laughs> Thank I'm you, Arsene. Here. Yep. Okay. So it's with regard to the the parliamentarian meeting that uh, is planned on the 29th. So my question, I, I'm sure probably uh, logistics will be will be coming, logistics details will be coming in late. But I was just wondering whether uh, there will be any kind of financial supports for some of those MPs to come to attend the meeting, or whether uh, they will be funded through the, the Global South uh, funds if they are coming from the Global South. This is just to help you know manage expectations. Because I would really, I mean, I commend it's a really good uh, opportunity for some of our MPs, you know, to be involved with uh, the, um, the work of the IGF. So uh, such a clarification will be helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Arsene. I think we'll hear from, from Daniela and then possibly also from Chengatai as well. Daniela? Yes, there will be funding uh, in addition to the uh, Global South Fund uh, for Parliamentary. No? In the framework of the Global South Fund? Okay, but I mean, we will. We, we yeah, so, pro <laughs> so for everyone, uh, one part of the Global South Fund will be dedicated to parliamentarians, right? Okay, <laughs> thanks, Rudolf. Um, sorry, just to add on to that, yes, so. Um, we have funding for the um, parliamentarian specific funding for parliamentarians. If you 
we may not catch all the parliamentarians that are interested. So I would suggest that if you have a few parliamentarians that are interested, please contact uh, the IGF Secretariat. We also have uh, Global South funding for, uh, which is a wider catch for people, uh, for funding for people to come to IGF Berlin. So if this does not exclude that we can have additional funding for parliamentarians as well. It just depends on the mix that we have because we want to create a, a, a good mix of people that we, that we are funding thanks to the German funds to come to the Berlin IGF. Rudolph, do you want to? No. <laughs> um, when could we actually expect from the MAG to just understand the Global South funding programs and the various components of it so that everybody can share those details appropriately through their wider networks? And I would also hope that if some of that funding, and I appreciate that I'm kind of advancing something here, um, to bring parliamentarians in is to bring them into the full IGF, not just the Friday. Friday yes, meeting, sure. And I'm not quite sure where to look, so I'm not sure who's mm. actually mm. managing that, that process. Yeah. But. Parliamentarians are going to be funded for the whole of the IGF, so they're not just coming for one day, they're coming for the whole IGF from day zero to the end. So uh, that is not a concern. As far as the Global South funding is concerned, we will be sending an email out this week just to inform you. We've already informed uh, national and regional initiative um, coordinators because they're the ones that are going to be helping us um, identify people to be funded. But we will give, we'll, I will send an email out to the MAG as well. Thanks. Presumably there would be a request to the MAG to help with the outreach and further identification um, as well, given it's a very international <laughs> MAG. Yes, you have the floor. Uh, hello. Uh, good morning. To, uh, my name is Maciej Gron from Poland. Uh, I would like to ask you about, you know, the uh, um, uh, m member, members of the Euro European Parliament. They are also involved in this IGF, or do you just think about the uh, uh, national parliamentarians? Also the European par uh, parliamentarians, of course. Also, the European parliamentarians. Yeah, uh, parliamentarians are parliamentarians. <laughs> but not all will have access to the developing country south funds. <laughs> Just in case that was another question somewhere in the queue. Yeah. OK, back to the. Well, uh, I can explain it uh, because we were just pinning the details that um, for the so for the Global South funds, it's mainly for traditional transitional economies and the global what we traditionally call the Global South. For the parliamentarian funds, there's really no restriction to which country they come from because we do want a good mix of parliamentarians. Um, and also the um, Global South funds, it's not just restricted to any stakeholder group, to one stakeholder group, you know, let's say government, it's government, civil society, private sector from the Global South as well. Thank you, Changatai. Paul, Paul Charlton, you have the floor. Oh, thank you, Lynn. Um, I just have a question for Dr. Brunstrup, and, and again, I'd like to, to express my um, uh, appreciation for the, the uh, tremendous work and the resources that the German government has, has put into uh, uh, planning for this year's meeting. Uh, I have a question about the, the meeting that you were indicating, the high-level meeting on day zero. Um, I think it's quite clear what the concept of high-level means in relation to governments, but you were mentioning that there would be, this would involve all stakeholder groups, and I'm just wondering if you had a criteria for selecting non-governmental um, uh, representatives or non-governmental stakeholders who would be attending this meeting, or would it be generally open to other stakeholders in addition to high-level government representatives? Um, I just wanted to, to sort of clarify the concept. In, in fact, we are in discussion with the different uh, multi-stakeholder groups. Uh, 
and basically also they are involved in deciding but what we are looking for are really high-ranking people of all the different groups meaning that are those that are really taking decisions are moving forward processes so I mean we do not have a special criteria catalog or something like that uh, but I have the impression that the stakeholders themselves know very well who are the decision-making people uh, of their groups uh, do you want to add something, Rudolf? I'll come to the rest of the queue in a moment, but just recall to everybody that at the end of the day today from 5 to 6 is when we're actually uh, scheduled to have a, a sort of a full discussion on um, the opening, um, high-level opening sessions, closing sessions, day zero, which is a, a different set of activities, and also um, double-sided is and also um, the main session topics as well. So um, rather than kind of piecemealing it here, if we can perhaps wait until that, that discussion. Um, having said that, it will go to the queue to see if there are um, related or additional comments. Susan Chalmers, you have the floor. Thanks, Chair. <clears throat> and uh, thank you to BMWI and Dr. Brunstrup for um, uh, uh, this explanation of um, yeah, high level meeting and uh, on day zero. I just had a burning question, if you'll indulge me. Um, on the parliamentarian <coughs> session, um, are there parliamentarians from specific countries that you are um, targeting, or is it open to all legislators? I mean, would it include uh, members of Congress, for example? Um, uh, I just want to clarify, perhaps legislator might be a more uniform term and then uh, secondly, what are the desired outcomes uh, of this meeting? And if we want to discuss that later on this, uh, today, that's okay too. But I just wanted to raise that. Thanks. Maybe just on the first point. I mean, from the German perspective, parliamentarians are legislators. So yeah, they are included for the special question you had. And maybe uh, the other thing for later then. I'm sorry for having opened the discussion to that point by my no, no. keynote. <laughs> and I think it's still helpful to give a, an overall view. Uh, Raquel, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Lynn. Um, and uh, I would like to echo some of the, the previous comments congratulating the efforts made by UNDESA, uh, by, of course, the IGF Secretary, Ari Magcher, and in particular, the, the host country. Uh, we had the opportunity to visit Berlin uh, last week and uh, to learn more of the efforts that are being made. And uh, we are sure you're going to get things done and done well. So <laughs> thank you very much. But. Um, I understand that the day zero uh, we are going to discuss later, so I'm going to focus still uh, just uh, as uh, part of the inputs uh, that we we might uh, work on this uh, Global South program uh, in both ways, either for uh, the broader participation as uh, the parliamentarians, uh, to have also, I mean, more clarity on the MAG role uh, in that. It is, uh, on one hand, of course, to get this streamline with the efforts that many of us are somehow involved, and, and that's good. Uh, we can um, join uh, some of those efforts and, and get uh, uh, more people and more diversity, but then it's also about how we can engage those people because it's not only bringing them uh, and uh, as part of the mandate of the MAG is uh, on the program, how we can engage them uh, fairly and, and make sure this is worthwhile. So those are my inputs. Thank you very much. Thank you, Raquel. Maybe I'll have a quick sidebar with um, Chengatai and see if we find some time on the agenda to actually kind of just have that discussion um, on the program sometime in the next couple of days. Uh, Rajesh, you have the floor. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. And uh, no doubt it's a very good effort by the host country for bringing the parliamentarians at the platform, which generally makes the rule for the Internet. I echoing the point raised by Susan that what sort of parliamentarians we are thinking of and what is, what is our expectation from them. Because if I take the example of India, we have got a very long queue of parliamentarians, but we have got some standing committee on the telecom and on the ITU. So whether we are expecting those parliamentarians to the meeting or we are talking of the general parliamentarians, 
who I think who are they are the lawmakers, but they don't have the broad knowledge of the ITU or related item to the IGF. So we should be very selective. <clears throat> Otherwise, it will become a queue. Chengatai says that he has a quick answer, and if it's not um, satisfactory, we will move it to a later, okay. later item. All right. Uh, so first of all, we have limited funds, so we can't open it up to everybody, uh, <laughs> to all legislators. And this is the IGF. We want legislators. I'm, I'm not using the word parliamentarians because it causes some confusion. Legislators who are involved in internet governance kind of issues. So yes, so if we have applications, those are the ones who will have preference. Uh, in that case, Cheng Tai, we should be sending invitation or the offer only to those who are connected with the IGF or the ITU. Otherwise, what will happen if you will send the invitation to all the persons and then they start rejecting no. them, mm -hmm. it will look not look nice. Exactly. We're not, I mean, we, we have not specified every single letter and, you know, subparagraph of our action plan, but we're not going to send um, letters to, I don't know how many countries are there, 200 and so odd, pol you know, parliaments, um, senates, etc. No, uh, we are going to try and be a little bit more uh, direct in choosing w which uh, people that we invite. Yes. Exactly. So we want the ones that are involved in IG issues in India, and as you said, those people who are involved in those committees, you know, parliamentary committees that are dealing with internet governance issues. Yes. That's my suggestion, yes. that we should be inviting only those who are connected with the ITU, IGF, or the telecom. Uh, yes. I, uh, okay, we won't have the, the discussion yes. now, sure. but... <laughs> We fully understand you, and don't, don't, don't worry, we have put a lot of thought in it, and, and thank you. And yes, and you're all free to come and talk to me afterwards as well, or talk to us afterwards, but yes. <laughs> Daniela? Thank you, Lynn. Yeah, n not to extend the discussion, but maybe to make something clear. Um, our, our parliament hasn't decided finally yet, but probably, I mean, that's the usual procedure. Probably our president of parliament, Mr. Schäuble, will send a letter to his colleagues and then it's up to every country to just decide who is coming. Uh, so we do not want to prescribe who is coming, we are just inviting and that's on a high ranking level and then you decide yourself or your parliaments decide. And that seems like a, a very sensible approach as well as um, uh, correct diplomatic um, procedure as well. Um, my preference would be not that Chengatai was inundated with a bunch of individual discussions because I think that leads to more confusion. Mm -hmm. um, we will try and find um, an appropriate time, if not during this call, perhaps on a virtual MAG call once um, the program is a little more complete. Um, I have to admit I'm not even sure of the current status of the program in terms of yeah. its uh, approval. But when it is complete, we will make sure the MAG has the information in front of them and we will actually set aside some appropriate time, whether that's in this meeting or it's on a subsequent call. Yes, and, and as I said, I'll send information out to the MAG list. So once the information is out to the MAG list, you can look at it and then if you have any questions, we can have a d discussion on the mag list, but once it's ready to go, we'll send it to the mag list. <laughs> Thank you, Changatai. Uh, Christoph, you have the floor. Uh, hello, v very short question on day zero to have it 100% uh, clear. So at the moment we are in the process of submitting the workshop proposals, uh, which is uh, the, the deadline is by the end of this week. And I have a question if we should do the same if we are ready to submit proposals for day zero senior governmental officials meeting. Do it in the same way or should we propose it in may maybe in a little bit different way? I mean to discuss the areas like a model of the governance in digital space and stuff like this, more horizontal, more strategic than very deep technical uh, workshops. Thank you. Check it I'm trying to catch up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, sorry. So there are two things, right? There's the um, host country day zero activities, and then there's also the normal activities that anybody can apply for. So those ones are ending on, uh, the, the, the application is closing on the 12th of April. So yes, I mean, anybody's free. It's looser than the general meeting, so anybody's free to send a proposal, and um, we'll, we'll take it on if there's space, or if we find that it is interesting, depending on the amount of applications that we have. But the host country high-level leaders meeting set of activities is a different thing. Mm -hmm. uh, what I understood Christoph's um, discussion to be was not about the high-level meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, and clearly understanding what the current process is for day zero workshops, but I think he was also suggesting is there an opportunity to look at more, um, rather than an individual government or an individual IGO, and of course all those presentations are supposed to be multi-stakeholder as well, but rather than just a, a sort of a single stream organization or single stream company, um, country, was there an opportunity to do something um, more strategic and more horizontal and was that an appropriate use of a day yeah, zero exactly. application? Was that, and I, and I think the answer is yes, mm -hmm. um, providing it is still um, government um, and IGO sort of, I don't know what the word is, centric or led, because that's what the, the day zero facility was to accomplish. And at the same time, I really hope that with the, um, no, sorry, never mind, with the open forums was actually, their specific, okay, now I'm getting confused here. <laughs> um, your question was specific to open forums or day zero? Day zero. Okay. Yes, uh, how we can be involved, I, I think, much more depend in the d day zero agenda or discussion or what. what for example, if we, if we do have the good connections with our governments, is there any way we should maybe do the process in a different way or the government should go through the standard workshop uh, uh, submission proposals to influence a little bit on the D0? But uh, it's not a standard workshop proposal because day zero is much, much looser. I mean, we take, you know, day-long events. If you have a proposal for a day-long event, you know, send it to the secretariat. We'll look at it. So there aren't any hard and fast rules um, for that. And that's why we have the day zero for things that don't fit into the normal um, IGF program. Uh, Open forums are a bit different. There is uh, a set format for, for those, and, and that's available on the um, website. And it's for governments and uh, treaty-based organizations with, of course, um, ICANN and ISOC aren't treaty-based organizations, but they are acknowledged to have you know, worldwide internet governance activities with impact on the internet. So yes, I mean, they're allowed to have activities um, for open forum. So those are the two different things. If your government is interested in hosting a day zero um, event, yes, they can just send a pro proposal in and we'll take a look at it and uh, give it a slot if, you know, if the room. But again, you know, it's, it's, it's totally open. We're looking for interesting ideas. Uh, there's no real set for, uh, format for that. Open forums, we usually want to keep them to one government each. We don't want one government to have like six open forums. You know, uh, yeah. So mm. there, there might be some some um, ideas or subjects which are cross-governmental. So that's that may be the idea to organize something like this, like a cross-governmental discussion on strategic issues. So that just the open question. I don't want to uh, no no talk that's too much fine. for your time right now. But just the idea behind to. To do it, yeah. Yeah, the idea is fine. As you say, this is the IGF. We we are in, interested in you know something new, something that will bring uh, more value to the IGF. So if you have something, yeah, come talk to us. Write a proposal. Uh, we'll that's fine. Uh -huh. Thanks. Maybe very briefly. I mean, we are organizing this kind of cross-governmental discussion by the high-level meeting. I mean, that's the idea of our invitation from our minister um, and the day zero basically shall have a focus on that kind of discussion and then there are 
other activities and indeed, as Schengen has said, you send them in and then we try to find a, a good balance of fora and workshops and uh, initiatives. Uh, but for the kind of discussion you are talking about, I have the impression that will be kind of the ministerial meeting and the meeting with the, the stakeholder groups. Okay, I'm going to go through the, the queue that's here, and then, if again, if the questions are substantive on high level or opening, opening or closing ceremonies, we have a slot at the end of the day today to do that um, properly with an, a, a, an appropriate introduction. Um, we have Halani. You have the queue. Is Halani online? Halani, we'll come back to you in a moment unless you're ready now. Okay, well, let's go to Benny Markovsky and then Halani, we'll come back to you just as soon as we have a signal. Uh, thank you, Lynn. And um, sorry to take the floor. I could have uh, asked the question the f first time, but um, uh, and I forgot to thank, obviously, again, the local host here and uh, the host in Germany for uh, having us. Um, uh, the question, I got a couple of questions from uh, my part of the world, uh, Eastern Europe, with regards to the deadline, uh, which is Friday. Um, they're asking whether uh, we could consider that, given that the fact that uh, the next two days are Saturday and Sunday, so there will be no reviews, so to speak, like processing those requests, we could give them two extra days and make the deadlines at the end of Sunday. I don't know if that's possible, but I just need to ask you. Chengatai is saying, um, yes, that's possible. Um, I guess the next question is, does that extend to all of the deadlines that were due on <laughs> April 12th? And I, I would suggest that maybe you talk to the rest of the staff and, and we'll come back with some clarification and then make sure the website is updated appropriately. But rather than just doing this on the fly quickly, because I think it's still quite a tight schedule. Thank you, Venny. Is Halani ready now? I'm, I'm guessing not <laughs> by the heads buried in the computers over there. Um, so let's go to Carlos and then we'll come back to Halani again. Carlos? Okay. Yes, um, I am looking uh, on 2018, of course there were no day zero events due to several circumstances, but the uh, day zero events on IGF 2017 is, is a fantastic list. I don't know if you had the time to take a look at it to remind you. Uh, many multi-stakeholder events, uh, particularly from civil society, international civil society organizations, and was very, very rich. I think we could uh, take a look at it to serve as a sort of orientation to our judgment about what to do on day zero in 2019. Now, th thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Um, they have been a series of very, very um, rich events. I, I agree. Uh, Halani? Can Halani? I'm not actually in the yeah, web. We are disconnected yet. the audio session now. We are working on that. Sorry. Can, can Halani put her comment in the chat room? Would she prefer that or wait to come uh, back in? Yes, let's, we, will, uh, we will say that to her, and, but we will try to make her speak. Okay. Sylvia? Yes, it's the same. Uh, yeah, we will work on that. Okay. Um, so let me just see if we can give 30 seconds more, maybe so we can get Halani in before we move to the next agenda item. But I think we, we will ask the, the Secretariat to look at the deadlines um, for all the activities that actually were meant to close uh, April 12th and come back with clarification in terms of which ones might be extended um, through Sunday, <coughs> I'm guessing. Um, and um, we'll come back and give that information to the MAG and then make sure the website is updated appropriately. 
And again, um, at the very end of the day today is when we'll come back to uh, many of the discussions we were just having around day zero, high level opening, high level um, segment, and the opening and closing um, ceremonies as well. Um, we'll do that after we actually have a, an introduction. Hopefully, that'll make for a slightly smoother <laughs> uh, discussion. Halani? No? Okay, Halani, with sincere apologies, because um, I appreciate anybody who makes the effort to actually participate remotely. Um, it's not easy, so um, apologies for the difficulty, and I will wait for a signal, and then we will pull you in as appropriate. Um, if the time really has passed for your comment, um, then perhaps send a note to the, to the mag list um, separately. But I'll wait and, and follow your lead on that. So with that, we will move to agenda item five, which is an introduction to um, the bulk of today's discussions, <coughs> strategic discussions. So at, um, through a series of um, email exchanges and call uh, discussions on the MAG list and at our last MAG meeting, um, the MAG had actually agreed to put three MAG meetings in the first half of the year. Um, and that was partly because of the programming schedule for the workshops. It was also to allow us to address some of the more strategic areas or areas that had been identified as areas for improvement early enough in the year that we could actually make some headway on them over the, over the course of the year. Um, a number of the comments um, notably were focused on producing more tangible concrete outputs. Um, certainly um, efforts to be more inclusive, and that includes developing country and south that also included outreach to um, policymakers and um, uh, the private sector as well. Um, those requests came, as I said earlier, from longstanding um, official UN reports such as the CSTD Working Group on IGF Improvements, from a retreat that was held by DESA two years ago, from the annual stock taking reports um, that come throughout the IGF um, ecosystem, and certainly from um, comments such as those of Secretary General Guterres at the Paris meeting and, of course, President um, Macron as well. Um, I mean, it should be clear, I think, that um, there's a, a, a clear request for the IGF to address with some, I think, haste <laughs> or some immediacy, perhaps, um, some of the areas where people have signaled um, they really were looking for more. Um, I mean, I think we could actually say that um, if if it was felt broadly that the IGF was doing all it could within its Tunis mandate, not going outside of the mandate, um, we probably would not have had the HLPDC effort. Um, so I think we should be taking very seriously um, a lot of these efforts and a lot of these requests to ask the IGF um, to step up and look at what more can be done. We also know from our own communities and our own work, it's only 50 percent of the world is actually connected, even after all these years. That's a substantive piece of work that the IGF has always had a lot of interest and a lot of focus on. Um, are we doing all we can in that area? Um, but also all the other various challenges we're all facing, um, and I'm, I'm sure it differs whether we want to talk about um, security issues or um, gender access issues or fake news or um, the, the myriad of, of um, challenges that people see with Internet of Things and virtual reality and blockchain, et cetera. Um, there's certainly a lot of um, ground that we, can, that we can cover here. There have been several um, working group reports published to the MAG. Um, I think the most notable ones are probably the working group on IGF improvements and then the working group on the multi-year strategic um, work plan. And in the agenda, we listed about 10 or 12 of the sort of major areas that had come up through um, the working groups and various MAG discussions. I want to pull out, I think there's sort of three or four um, areas here that I think have had kind of the most significant um, airplay or concern within the MAG, um, and then open the floor up with respect to um, thoughts the MAG has and which are the right areas to address. I really hope that we focus on those that um, will have maximum impact and that we don't talk about those that are just going to kind of advance incrementally some of our activities. Um, there are clearly 
kind of more operational um, things we could do that would improve our activities. Um, I classify those as kind of incremental, but I think we need to be um, creative and um, and appropriately ambitious as we actually look at what um, what the IGF um, and the MAG might actually do to address some of these increasing uh, challenges, increasing opportunities. So one of the um, areas where there's been an awful lot of discussion over the past couple of years was um, multi-year strategic topics um, or a multi-year focus, which was actually, I mean, it's clear that a lot of the topics that we deal with are very substantive and they will take years um, as they advance. So the cybersecurity discussions we're having today or a security discussion is not the same one we were having five years ago or, or ten years ago. Um, but should we look at that field as an example and determine what work the um, IGF community might go away and address? Um, some of the expected benefits of that multi-year focus were that I identifying topics early would allow for more strategic approaches to the issue. It would allow us to outreach more broadly to all sorts of players and pull them in. Um, the time frame facilitates that as well as, of course, um, kind of more thoughtful activities in a, in a multi-year scope. Um, it would enable work year-round and also would minimize the loss of momentum from one year to the next, where it was clear that in past years when there was um, a two to three month window where there was no mag seated, we lost a lot of momentum and lost a lot of time. So the notion behind this multi-year program was that that would have facilitated work, work ongoing. And I'm very, very happy um, that um, we have a commitment to continue with the timely appointment of the MAG. Um, I don't think that takes away from um, the need to identify these multi-year topics to support year-round work and, and enable smoother transitions from one, one year to another, one MAG to another. Um, and also, presumably, it would result in better work products with um, that longer time horizon. Um, we've had that to some extent in the best practice forums where it's pretty clear that every one of the best practice forums has come up has actually imagined multi-years worth of work. Um, the best practice forums tend to involve a, a relatively small number of MAG members and, and sort of specific parts of the, the community. It, um, and I think people think of that as tangential to the work of the, the IGF. So I think that raises some questions both for how we perceive some of those activities and how they're connected to the MAG and whether or not, in fact, they're the right activities. Um, we've also, uh, in past years, had a major intersessional policy program. We had Connecting and Enabling the Next Billions for four years. Um, we decided to sort of sunset that uh, for a period of time this past year, which does leave an opportunity to undertake another major intersessional uh, policy program, and I think that's a discussion we need to have um, soon as well. So some of the questions I think the MAG might address with respect to that particular topic is should we be doing more multi-year planning? And if so, um, in what areas? And should the various activities we have today, such as BPS or the major intersessional policy program, should those activities be strengthened? Um, and if so, how? And then kind of a gen generic question was, are we engaging all parts of the IGF ecosystem as much and as early as possible? So again, that was trying to pull together some of the threads out of um, two of the working groups, in fact, um, that had looked at this, the, in, the working group on improvements and the strategic multi-year work program. Um, another very major topic focused on more tangible outputs. Um, we hear that um, from virtually every corner of our community. Um, there's been a discussion, quite a robust discussion in the multi-year strategic work plan working group um, on more tangible outputs, um, including recommendations. And specifically in last year's working group, two pilots were proposed to facilitate the intercessional and multi-year work. Um, they were meant to focus on more concrete outputs and possible modalities for different types of recommendations. And um, again, nobody wants to work outside of the Tunis agenda, but some of the working group members uh, stress that specifically the Tunis agenda not only allows that, it calls for that. And they reference paragraph 72G, which states in the Tunis agenda, to identify emerging issues, bring them to the attention of the relevant bodies and the general public, and where appropriate, make recommendations. And nobody thinks these are binding policy recommendations. We're clearly not set up for that. 
Um, but there's a whole gamut of, of um, recommendations that um, some believe we could actually, actually be implementing. So again, there were two pilots proposed last year. Um, one was methodologies for the development of written IGF outputs, and the second one was strengthened cooperation within the context of IGF 2019. So the aim of both those pilots was to determine if or how we could use those experiences in future IGF cooperation processes. And the pilots were proposed as alternative sessions leading up to or for the Berlin IGF. Um, the strength and cooperation pilots moving forward in the community, um, that one in fact built on two years of successful um, preparatory work held through various IGF workshops or sessions. Um, and there's support for continuing that in the community, so that is actually um, uh, moving forward as well. Uh, so the one that's in front of us, that the working group actually um, felt very strongly had to come to the full MAG um, because we were not able to progress to a decision in the working group, was the one, the proposal for methodologies for the development of written IGF outputs. Um, and throughout that process, there was sort of a recurring issue, which is how far should we go with more tangible outputs, and what do we mean by recommendations? Um, so I think that's um, another area that we could specifically um, try and advance here over the course of the day. Um, there was another significant effort on improving current outputs, and there was quite a, a number of changes made, mostly operational last year, um, where we tried to provide more guidance to the workshop organizers as they prepared their sessions um, and as they reported out on their sessions, both ahead of and um, at the end of the sessions. And of course, we um, uh, improved on the IGF 2017 Geneva messages with what we did in Paris last year with IGF messages, and we got messages out of all of the individual workshops. And we, I think, um, streamlined and sort of significantly updated the chair's summary as well. Um, that chair's summary focused on themes and took in all the input by theme, whether that came from a workshop, a main session, an open forum, a day zero event. So it really did try and capture the full set of, of discussions um, thematically that had been held over the course of IGF um, 2018. Um, there were also some suggestions that we um, look maybe at some of the processes that are being used in some of the national and regional IGF initiatives. Um, where they have repeters in session that take five, ten minutes at the end of each session and try to capture kind of the main messages, the main takeaways that were heard in that session, and they present that to the audience, and the purpose is to see if that correlates with what the audience believe they just heard and participated in. Um, and, of course, if there was sort of strong objection or somebody thought a, a point had not been um, dealt with or dealt with appropriately, there was an opportunity for them to to comment as such. And then that actually fed the IGF findings. So that was a way of getting kind of a, a community validation, if you will, of the output of that topic. And there's some other things we could do to, I think, process our, our workshops a little bit um, differently. Um, there's a lot of discussions about what we can do to actually um, increase um, engagements. Um, with the dynamic coalitions, for instance, with the national, regional IGF and youth um, initiatives. And then if you look through the agenda, um, there were those other uh, 10 or 12 points, some of which I've actually encompassed, um, encompassed here. But what I think what we need to do at, at this point is to um, basically have an open discussion with the MAG with respect to what they think some of the more strategic areas are, what the priorities are, and some um, sort of ideas as to how we might actually approach them. We moved the open consultation day, the open community day, to day two so that we could ask the community the same thing and if there was anything um, um, sort of substantive coming out of this discussion today that we had an opportunity to review it with them as well. So um, we're trying not to overprocess this. Um, we are a large group, 52 or 53 MAG members, plus we have the representatives of IGO organizations and the past 13 IGF host countries. Um, 
So I think we don't get together all that often in these sorts of discussions, and it's not um, the kind of easiest one to process through. But really what we're looking to hear is what are the areas that you think are the most important for the IGF to address, the most strategic, and suggestions with respect to how we might advance some of them. So I will open the floor now. We have until lunchtime, 1 o'clock, and then we have the first hour afterwards as well before we come back to some of the other, other sessions. Are there any views on um, what I reported out? I tried to capture the key themes from the two working groups that the MAG had. Um, they've been shared on the MAG list since last, uh, the end of last year, um, trying to really put the, the, the kind of concrete issues in front. I mean, what we hear from many, many um, individuals, of course, is a need for more more tangible outputs. Um, how do we make you know the the substantive dialogues that take place at the IGF? How do they translate out of this forum and into places where they can actually be um, advanced upon? So Raquel, Gato, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Lynn. Um, and I can give a try to start the sparking the discussions. Of course, we have many ideas of um, how to uh, help strengthen the IGF. I think we've but said many times, and it's worth to, to say again, uh, the IGF has uh, come a long way, and um, it is the place where we want to have these international discussions around the internet um, uh, and the public policies around the internet. Um, I'm going back just, uh, and I'm sorry if I'm being erratic, but going back to your questions. Um, the first question was, should we have the multi-year um, planning, right? And I think straightforward is yes, those um, are important issues that are not going to be solved uh, in a one-year round. And although we have the MAC constraints in terms of uh, the mandate, um, those are evolving processes. And the more we can avoid redundancy, the better, um, or repetition, let's say. Um, and um, regarding the intersessional work, so particularly in my time in the MAG, um, I've been uh, uh, co-facilitating the intersessional work with the CNV effort. And it's really a major effort. I think we need to leverage also some of the existing discussions according to uh, the program priorities. So by saying that, either uh, we had the discussion when we were approving some of the VPFs, for example, the, the IoT, AI, and so on. So are there emerging issues that we need to bring either into a process of community discussion, which are the, the VPFs, or into a major discussion and streamline with the stakeholder and the concrete actions and so on to find these recommendations? So. Um, I think this is worth to, to be considered, and it shouldn't be dropped. Uh, there is importance in this uh, in this track. Um, and I'm going straight to the question about the tangible outcomes. And there seems to be um, usually a confusion on um, the usual outputs and, and outcomes and what we are talking about. Um, in my view here, uh, there is there are results that come out of the IGF. There are recommendations that comes from the BPFs, uh, work that comes from the, the uh, dynamic coalitions, work that comes from uh, the, the messages, uh, the IGF messages that are reporting out the, the discussions um, in, in the workshops and sessions. So there are results. And it has been said before that we, we also need to market it better to uh, outreach and to make sure that this is reaching to the people it needs to 
to, to know about it, right, and do something about it. But there is also <clears throat> a separate, and, and that's perhaps the outcomes part, which is the impact. And in terms of the impact, there are two that I, I can say, one that is pretty clear that is successful, which is promoting also the model of the multi-stakeholder and the, this collaboration and, and discussions. And those are the NIRs. They are a product of the, the IGF per se. And I'm sorry. <laughs> I could hear me twice. Um, <clears throat> and uh, <coughs> sorry about that. And so they are, um, this is an impact that we see, right? That it, it's coming out of the IGF. But there is also uh, perhaps, and that's the question mark, where uh, it's the improvement part that needs to be seen and discussed, of course, um, which is uh, where this is really being adopted and where this is really generating, um, you know, even at the local level, is this generating new processes is uh, in terms of regulation or so on, or not, or even it should be anyway. But those are the kinds of questions that, uh, in terms of the impact that we, we still need to, to see. I hope that uh, at least it sparked the discussions within the MAG into the more strategic uh, work that we can do. Thank you, Raquel. Um, appreciate anyone who jumps into the discussion here at this point. It's always, always hard to get it kicked off. Um, Yuta, you have the floor. <clears throat> Thank you, Lynn, for giving me the floor. I just wanted to under underline what uh, Raquel has pointed out, that I don't think we have a deficit in tangible out or outcomes, we have a deficit in marketing them and bring them to, to unfold their impact. And therefore, I do think that uh, with the meeting of the parliamentarians or the legislators this year uh, at the IGF Berlin meeting, we have a good opportunity to bring the outputs from the sessions that we have at the IGF uh, to unfold more impact in, in legislation, but also in the work the parliamentarians are doing. And uh, for that, I do think we would need uh, to, to come to a good methodology, how all the things that have been then worked on during day, the first three days of the IGF can be brought forward to the meeting of the parliamentarians so they know what has been discussed. I don't think that all of them will attend all sessions, all the three days before. So we would need to have a clear strategy how to bring that forward. And also we could uh, discuss at an early stage how we can come into more close cooperation once the attention of legislators and parliamentarians has been drawn to, to internet governance and to the things that we are doing. We continue can continue that process also after the IGF in Berlin is finished. Thank you. Thank you, Yuta. And now we have quite a number in the queue, which is great. Arsene, you have the floor. Yeah. Um, well, probably my, my first question would be, maybe a question before before I can I can elaborate more would be, who uh, I mean, who do you what do you mean when you say um, senior policy makers? If it's MPs uh, in this in this in this area, I find it's personally very very good. You know, it's a very good approach, and probably this goes back to the discussion we had earlier on about inviting MPs uh, at the IGF. I find this very useful and valuable to have uh, national MPs attending uh, global IGFs or, you know, somehow being involved in uh, in the IG IGF activities along the year. Because sometimes, uh, you know, when we try to bring them into national IGFs, sometimes they have no idea about, uh, about the whole of the IGF. And though we need their participation as well, you know, into fostering the discussions on the national level. So I believe uh, if they are really uh, brought into the discussion about the IGF globally, not only at the global meeting, but also throughout the year, I think this can increase, you know, their involvement and participation into national IGFs. 
sometimes from my own experience you've seen uh, most uh, national IGFs they lack uh, participation from people like MPs though they are the ones who are working on policy issues and so uh, whenever they're discussing policy uh, on the parliamentarian level, they are lacking some of those uh, things that we, which are beautiful and what we discuss about during the IGF, which could help, you know, um, into the creation of policies on the national level. But if we have MPs who are close or familiar with the work of the IGF, I think, and if they hear all those beautiful things that are being discussed at the IGF, this has, uh, has effects, you know, impacting the policy making processes on, on the ground. Thank, thank you, Arsene, um, very thoughtful comment. Um, just one quick point of clarification. When I say senior policymakers, I'm actually trying to be generic so that it includes NPs. It also includes, of course, senior policymakers in the private sector, um, who obviously are very, very active in terms of setting policy in a lot of these um, spaces simply through their actions and their, and their corporate actions. And it also includes um, senior policymakers in, in IGOs and, and that sort of thing as well. Um, in addition to to um, to ministers, um, Ben Wallace, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. Um, so thanks, Lynn, for for making this a large part of our meeting this week. And uh, I agree, it's it's great that this year we have the opportunity to do that and and spend more time discussing um, looking beyond just this year's meeting and and, and discussing the future of the IGF. Uh, thank my colleagues for already speaking, particularly for, to Raquel for being the, the first one to plunge in and, and giving us um, plenty of things to think about. Um, so I wanted to offer two thoughts. Um, firstly, looking at um, something that both Raquel and, and Jutta said, um, and going back to things which, which I talked before about um, <coughs> the need for um, more marketing um, of of all of the existing outputs and how that might be done better. Um, Lynn, you, you said that the CNB had been sunsetted and that leaves an opportunity to undertake another major intersessional policy program. Um, but I wonder if it, it provides the opportunity and frees up some resources within the Secretariat um, to actually do more marketing. I, I don't know quite how the, uh, the intersessional the CNB was resourced and how much of the Secretariat's time and how much of the budget it took up. Um, but if there's the opportunity, for example, to get in a communications professional for a short period of time to advise the Secretariat and to bring in some new ideas, I just think about that as an opportunity um, before leaping into another intersessional um, policy program. I, and, and I'm also interested to hear um, hear how we might use the NRIs or work with the NRIs to uh, to create that kind of impact of what's happening at the global area. So it's not just about marketing directly uh, at a global level from the Secretariat, but uh, can we use the NRIs and work with them to do that too? So the, the first thought was about uh, marketing. And separately you asked whether there are particular issues that are, um, are most important and, and should be our focus. So I had a thought, and this is, it's broader than a single policy issue, um, but looking to the, what the UN Secretary General said about um, needing to be more multidisciplinary, and, and hearing the high-level panel talk about you know, the need to avoid developing policy in silos, um, I wonder whether there's something we can look at as to how you uh, do joined up policy making, how you have a holistic policy environment. Are there initiatives or, or ideas out there for making it easier to um, look at policy and internet governance issues in a way that brings um, together traditional kind of technology focused uh, policy makers with those in other parts of government and, and other stakeholders that aren't generally and um, traditionally involved. So, that's maybe something uh, we can explore when we look at the main sessions as well, but uh, I thought I'd float it as a general idea first. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Um, I'm going to ask Chengatai if he wants to respond to um, just not doing uh, a fifth phase of the CEMB free up any resources, any significant resources. 
I mean, um, I was actually lined up to, you had two questions about the communications uh, professional. I mean, that's one thing that we have to talk to um, you and Desser about and see whether or not that's a, a, a possibility. I mean, it's a, and um, for the CNEB, I mean, for anything that we do, we need to have somebody that is a neutral person. So um, I'm not too sure how that would work with, um, without having anybody from the Secretariat or from a, a consultant hired by the Secretariat for the CNEB. That's a little bit uh, difficult. But um, we didn't have a solid proposal from, for a CNEB um, section. If we have one and like, that's discussed by the MAG and it's approved, we could find some. Now, I think the, the question was a little bit different, which is, given we had decided not to do a CEMB this year, mm. is that freeing up any significant resources that we could use to improve outputs in a different manner? And I think the Secretary of Resources was a fraction of a consultant for a period of a few months last year, so it wasn't a substantive yes. full Sorry. salaried person that we could actually put to that, so it's, it's minimal. It was a third of a consultant, basically. And this year we've actually um, put, we've swapped that CNMB work to do capacity development work. So the consultant now has been uh, uh, tasked with doing uh, framework for our capacity development work so, so that we can more effectively do capacity development um, through the NRIs and through all our other meetings. So that, that, that's how we, we use that freed up resource. Thank you, Changatai. Um, I think, though, Ben, in sort of the spirit of your question, if there is work that the MAG thinks should be taken up within the MAG, then I think we also need to be creative about how we actually um, resource that work. Um, clearly, we can put MAG resources to lead it or drive it. We, um, the Secretariat can accept in-kind contributions. They, we do need to make sure that, in fact, they are um, biased and neutral resources. Um, but with that said, with there's, if there's MAG oversight, that also gives us some, some extra leeway as well. So, um, you know, if, if people thought there was an, an institution or an organization that would be willing to provide some resources um, or support a project or pilot, then we should um, approach them as well. There's a lot to be learned from people coming in and participating in this process whether it's working with the Secretariat, it's working with the community, or it's working with the MAG. So it's a win-win if we can pull people in from other organizations or um, academia um, to, to come in and, and support the activities here. So I think we're going to need to be creative about resourcing any of the things we actually desire to do here, because there's not a pot of unused money in the Secretariat that we can just redirect to these activities, unfortunately. Um, Chennai, Chennai Chair, you have the floor. <laughs> um, morning, everyone. Um, so Chennai Chair, for the record, I was thinking when you were talking about the tangible outputs, um, it's a problem that I think a lot of. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, I think it's a lot of. Pro it's a problem that's common across different initiatives that are trying to bring people together, in terms of what has been your impact or what has been your outreach. So my suggestion is that um, perhaps we can actually, and on your point about limited resources, actually engage the community that we facilitate this conversation for. So for example, um, I think a lot of people have either attended fellowship meetings or have been part of fellowships. One of the things you're asked to do is to reflect on how have you taken the lessons that you've gathered in this space and what have you done to build upon them. So even though we ask people to provide reports on um, post the sessions to actually point out that I did write a report. Perhaps also when people are filling in the application for the next round of workshop to point out how they have implemented, especially those who are second time or third time participants, to actually point out how they've implemented what they've gathered or the recommendations they gathered based on the facilitation of attending an IGF meeting. And I think that would actually 
be helpful to actually use that section because it can come up as an own as a separate question to actually put together in a report to actually say I attended IGF in 2016 and I participated on the BPF gender for example which was the main discussion 2017 and from there we implemented A, B, C and D based on the discussion that was done and I think that actually would serve the community to see the purpose of being part of the IGF, not just attending for the sake of attending, but to actually say I learned something and this is what I did with it and that could be a tangible output. And I think that's an excellent suggestion tonight and maybe we can even support that um, even now and with some online tool to start collecting a lot of the, um, the information. Um, Maricela, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. And uh, just for the record, I want to state that I am a MAC member. I don't know why the system does not recognize me as such, but I am. <laughs> I am a MAC member from Costa Rica. Uh, good morning again. I just want to welcome this reflection and brainstorming on, on these um, strategic issues, including the marketed, marketing matter. And I think, you know, just hearing to the other colleagues speaking this morning about this recurrent, you know, conversation in terms of uh, us uh, being able to better disseminate our products, I can uh, totally concur with that. I mean, I don't think that there is a lack of outcomes and outputs. It's just a lack of systematization, probably, on, on the way we have been able uh, to disseminate those uh, results. And I don't think this is a problem that affects only the IGF community. I think that we can uh, find this problem in other platforms as well. Um, uh, there was a suggestion last year uh, regarding the identification of a potential facilitator to help us explore strategic issues. I think that uh, listening to Shingatai talking about a consultant that is focusing on, uh, you know, within the framework of the capacity development um, uh, program, you know, uh, looking for b best practices or, or better ways to, to enhance that um, important uh, pillar of our work, I could suggest that we also give some thought to identifying, I, I know that, you know, uh, resources are always uh, a question, but if we could identify a consultant uh, for the marketing uh, perspective, and uh, I was thinking that we, you know, we are hosted by ITU, and uh, I receive every week ITU news in my iPhone, for instance, and they come with, you know, th these uh, latest developments with just one paragraph, and if you want to go deeper, you just press it, but, you know, is just exploring and, you know, taking advantage of all these uh, new tools and, and virtual, uh, you know, mechanisms that uh, we have to disseminate information and looking at the community that we want to address, you know, because it's not only parliamentarians that are in charge of developing policy, but also ministries and uh, academia that contributes with their technical expertise to this uh, developing development of policy. I think that we can reach out slowly, but, you know, uh, in a very, you know, systematic manner to a broader community, a Broadwood network, if we were to explore uh, um, potential avenues for disseminating this information. But maybe we need a little bit of help with that and, and, and to just focus our attention to that aspect for a moment. And I also uh, would suggest that we may consider having an open session during the IGF this year to look at this issue and to hear from the you know wider community about ideas and thoughts uh, in better marketing our, our outcomes. But I think that uh, it is a good moment to, to give a further thought to this recommendation. I heard the uh, uh, Secretary General uh, speaking about this also in Paris, and I think that, uh, again, is, is quite uh, an opportunity at this juncture to, uh, you know, give momentum to what we're doing through marketing tools that may come to a lower cost than, than we think. Thank you. Thank you, Maricela. I don't know if there's an update from either Changatai or Denise. We have been trying to explore um, avenues to get some additional kind of marketing and communication support, um, but I don't think that we have anything that's sort of right in front of us at the moment. And, and one, one piece is certainly capturing it better. Um, 
I think we need to find a way to capture the intent. I mean, a report that says it was stated that, why was discussed, a point was made that uh, is not particularly useful. It's kind of interesting, but it's not particularly useful. And a lot of people have said they're looking for something um, that more gives a sense of what a community thinks or a group of people thinks. And I think one of the things we, we could try and assess is how do we actually get that? Some of the processes I've seen in, in again, in the National Regional IGF um, initiative meetings do do that. It can actually say that, you know, the workshop session um, participants, um, you know, generally agreed X or a comment was made and there was strong um, support or great disagreement or so something that, that sort of validates a little bit um, what was actually discussed as opposed to just a factual set of reports. And I think we need to think about how we could actually improve our outputs that way to some extent. And then I think we need to find a way to direct them. If we want philosophers and social scientists and other people to come into our meeting, we need to have specific reasons to approach them with specific content and a specific role for them to play. I mean, something for them to come in and participate in and contribute. Um, so I think we need to be, if we're going to take any of those um, uh, requests seriously, we're going to need to find different ways to operationalize them. And I think a lot of that is going to come on the MAG just by default. Um, I'm sure we can get support from community and community members um, individually, but it would still require kind of MAG leadership and MAG direction. It's not going to come from, um, you know, the, the small secretariat. Um, I don't even know if it should appropriately come from the secretariat as opposed to um, community, community expertise and community engaged. But I mean, again, I'm just throwing some things out to try and get some, some discussion started. Gonzalo. Hello, thank you. Uh, Gonzalo Lopez Barajas uh, from Telefonica Private Sector, uh, and I'm not a Mac Magmer. Uh, going back to the issue on, on improving the outputs and marketing the content, I think it would be interesting to look at the data of, of how well, the number of, of, uh, of the documents that have been downloaded or viewed in order to, to know where we stand and, and if those documents on the summaries of the sessions and on, on the workshops and after especially after having included the, the main messages if there is an impact on, on what people is looking at uh, the, the documents and downloading and it would be interesting to know where we stand now and also to compare it with previous years to see if there is an impact if we, for example we start marketing so those those documents if there is an impact on the number of low downloads and page view. So uh, I would suggest that, 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 that we start to look into those numbers to see how it was and where we stand now. I think that's a very good suggestion, Gonzalo. And while Gonzalo is not a MAG member, I can say that he's actually one of the most active working group <laughs> members from the community. Um, so really appreciate all of his time and, and effort there. But I think that's a great, great suggestion. Lewis is on, the, on that task at the moment. So Chengajai is reporting that, that uh, Lewis has already started um, getting that information. We've exhausted the queue at the moment. Would I mean we wanted some open time at the beginning to, you know, if there was something completely different on people's minds or something they wanted that they, they actually had that opportunity. Um, we can if we've exhausted that. Um, we could go back and try and look specifically at each one of the, the topics. Specifically, do we want to spend some more time on um, what we can do to improve outputs? Um, do we want to spend some time on um, what are some additional um, modalities or pilots we might look at to explore where we could um, push um, forward on recommendations? Do we want to talk about the multi-year strategic planning? I mean, would people prefer a single-threaded approach? Again, we haven't had the, the um, kind of luxury of having um, these more open strategic discussions in the MAG, so we didn't want to be too prescriptive up front, which is why we, st we started with the work of the working groups and brought those points of view in, because at least that was something that had been in front of the community and the, the MAG for some time. And Daniela, anytime you want to come in as well. Uh, 
Um, well, not seeing any preference or any suggestions from the room. Um, trying to think what's the best, the best way to go. Um, Maybe take the multi-year strategic topics for a uh, for a moment. Did you want to come in? Maybe. Thank you, Lynn. Maybe very briefly. Uh, I think the idea of having a multi-year strategic program is a very good idea because it it leads us to focusing on on the key issues and giving also guidance to the discussions discussions in communities, but also inside the mag. I think so. Um, in that way, I. I I really like the paper the working group presented, and um, thanks for that work. Also, um, I, I would support the idea very much. Thank you. Thank you, Daniela. If, in fact, we were to do that, if we I have no agenda here. I'm really trying to process what I think the room and the community have said, you know, over the over the years. This year we have three major themes. We have data governance, we have inclusion, and we have I'm just going to call it security because, you know, I'm, I'm a big proponent of cybersecurity is is conflating too much. Though I always say we need to break that down, but um, I I think if we can just stay with security for a moment. Um, we have those three topics. Um, we're expecting um, the bulk of the workshop submissions to come in, the vast bulk, I hope, um, uh, under those three, those three themes. We haven't talked about the opening and closing, uh, the main sessions yet. Um, you know, we could look at doing something which threads the topics that come in under those three main themes more and use the output of those um, discussions to actually set up work for the next few years. Um, that would mean we would have to um, think carefully through the main sessions um, and how they were positioned. We'd have to be prepared to look through the reports and the discussions of those um, sessions that came in and then work to suggest a multi-year thread. Um, we could target our main sessions to try and accomplish that. We could target our main sessions to work through an, an intro, um, and then maybe the main sessions uh, later in the week to try and uh, encapsulate what we've actually heard, which could <coughs> actually feed a multi-year um, program. I think the reason we've had difficulty getting um, pieces of that off the ground is it, it requires the MAG, I think, stepping up and taking a little more proactive role in terms of shaping some pieces of the program. And I think there have been, um, you know, views in the past that sort of every year it kind of resets and we ask the community what they'd like to talk about and the program is built bottom up from the community. And we don't want to lose that, but I think we're hearing from many, many places that that's not enough. Um, that something which did actually um, try and support um, the work of the community and structure the sessions and the work of the IGF when it comes together for its annual meeting in a way that actually helped advance a topic was what people are actually looking for. So, uh, you know, there's, I'm, I'm never sure if our discussion gets stuck because we're so stuck on the process and it has to be bottom up community and chosen annually um, or because there's a reluctance for the MAG to step in and take a more proactive role in terms of trying to shape the annual meeting activities. But I want to recall to everybody what Denise said at the end and what was said at the IGF Paris a few times. The MAG is actually here to advise the Secretary General. And the Secretary General has come in and said, I'd like your help in some of these areas and here's some other things I think you should pay attention to as you actually convene your program. Now we can obviously agree to not pay attention to that. <laughs> um, and at the same time, we have other activities taking place with the HLPDC and um, other forums as well. In fact, probably the WISIS forum here, um, you know, that I believe would and should step in and fill any gaps if it's not something the IGF should do or it's not something we seem to be able to do. 
So I think we need to um, figure out how we move these discussions forward. And I don't know if that's on a, a, a more general discussion about the role of the MAG as it relates to the program committee or where the MAG sits in reference to um, a relationship to the UN, or if this is more about not being able to wrap our heads around what are the sort of topics or substantive issues and how would we define those in a multi-year cycle. I mean, I, I don't know. And, you know, kind of hearing from everybody here with respect to, you know, what are, what you think are the, are the blocks or what, well, positively it'd be nice if we could say what are the next steps to actually advance some of this. But, but, I mean, are there things that are concerning about kind of what I just said or things you think that are kind of inhibitors to to us taking a more proactive role in shaping what happens at a meeting. I'm not talking about top down, but, but shaping, facilitating, leading. Sylvia, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, Sylvia Cadena, Technical Community, uh, MAC member. Um, well, just off the top of my head, without much um, deep thinking on what you just have said, uh, but in the interest of, of making some proposals and see how we can move this forward. I, I would like to put uh, uh, to the mark the idea that um, we could use a mechanism that is already there, that we have um, kind of uh, ownership as MAG members, which are the main sessions. Um, in a very similar way uh, that the workshops are, uh, they are kind of, we have to wait until a certain part in the process to actually structure what those sessions are going to be around and trying to focus the sessions around the themes for the year, et cetera, right? Um, last year we did eight, I think, um, that covered the seven baskets and then one around dynamic coalitions. If I, I, I maybe I'm mistaken and mixing them all up. But let's say we had that structure from last year, and I think it probably could work if we keep the structure from last year, although it doesn't necessarily reflect the three main topics that we are working this year, um, because that referred to a lot of stakeholder participation, um, issues that were of concern and are of, are of concern for many, and that might be relevant to one or more of the narratives. And we can. We can figure out how that puzzle fits together, but if we if we could have a look at those and say, um, let's give the the themes or or the topics for the main sessions a three-year term that is similar to the term of the MAC members that are joining the group, right? And then you may have the chance to develop the topic for that main session across three years. It doesn't have to be the same MAC member because, of course, we will rotate. But let's say we started last year uh, on the one that I, I helped uh, to put together, which was the one on technical and operational issues. It was um, around content filtering and blocking, which is linked to the cyber security, or the security uh, narrative, uh, but also has other, other impact in uh, some of the other narratives. So we could take a look at what was discussed last year in the main sessions and try to figure out, okay, is there any follow-up for that theme that was structured last year that we can continue and move on so that this, the main sessions are that part of the program that the MAG members have a little bit more control of um, so that we can structure them in this kind of three-year sort of cycle. Um, or two year, whatever it is that the, the MAG decide. I think it would be harder to, to look at other mechanisms that are already part of the program, like the um, open forums or day zero events, or how that take, how we can kind of interfere in a way in any of the workshops uh, as such, because that is kind of like a separate track where all the community participates. But the main sessions are there for us to structure. So if we, if we can put them to the service of the multi-year strategic plan, that might actually help us to, to experiment on this and see how it goes. And I'm happy to help with the, whatever it is that is required on that space. Thanks.
Thank you, Sylvia. Ben, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. Um, and yeah, that, some of mm, I was thinking of main sessions too. I'll get to that in a minute. There's certainly there's some synergy with with what Sylvia was saying. Um, maybe as as I don't know how long the queue is. No, it's not very long at the moment. Um, I mean, maybe a, we could get a, a refresher on what the proposal was around a multi-year program, just as to kind of stimulate more discussion. I, I was wondering what multi-year meant how long that might be and so Sylvia gives a good example of what it could be three years um, there's a risk that if you kind of set the agenda for three years that you, you can't keep up with developments over time um, presumably we can build in some flexibility to deal with that and as Sylvia says you, you you should be able to have the ability to develop the theme over years um, <coughs> Another idea was, as, as you point out, we're here uh, to advise the Secretary General on, on the program of the IGF and the direction of the IGF. Um, we're also waiting with bated breath to see what the UN's high-level panel on digital cooperation brings forward. It might ask nothing of the IGF, or it might provide us with challenges and, and asks. Um, so that makes me wonder whether we would want to set out a multi-year program before we before we give new homework, um, but but hopefully you know we'll be given our homework if we have any uh, by June. Um, so that's just another element to think of as we think about how to kind of set sail for a, a multi-year program. Um, I had been thinking as we as we came to this meeting about how we could use main sessions and, and probably simulated Lynn by by you uh, putting. Uh, sowing some seeds during the last mag call. Um, I'm interested in this idea of of topping and tailing the week with main sessions, uh, of having main sessions around the three themes which can set the tone at the start of the week, uh, and ones then at the end of the week which can which can hear from all of the workshop from as many of the workshops as possible uh, and kind of collect the the areas of agreement and consensus in those particular themes. I think the challenge, is, as I already imply there, is that, that there's going to be so many sessions on these themes that you'd want to give yourself plenty of time um, at the end of the week to hear them. So you, it, maybe it's more about having main sessions towards the end of the week and, and not having so many at the start of the week. But I'm, I'm certainly interested in that idea. Uh, as Sylvia points out, this is, you know, the community is uh, is invited to propose their workshops, their open forums, their DC sessions, and um, all of those. The main sessions are the one area where MAG members uh, get actively involved. Last year, I was involved in, in organizing one where we kind of started at the end of August and it all felt a bit rushed. Um, this year, we have that luxury of time again. So I'm, I'm very interested to get involved in organizing main sessions and, and see this meeting as... I, I see this meeting here as uh, what we do with the main sessions being the main output and, and look forward to then being able to begin working on them um, in the coming weeks already. So, thank you. No, th thank, thank you, Ben. Um, Danielle, I'll give you the floor and then I'll, I'll talk um, quickly, remind everybody what the kind of notion was behind the multi-year program. It wasn't the full agenda for the IGF, but I'll come back to that in a moment. Then Thank you. Yes, I would like to support the idea of having or using the main sessions for structuring because I think that was a good point that we, we already have outputs, but maybe not the kind of structured outputs that give enough visibility to those IGF outputs. So maybe the question is how to structure them and, and one way was to set the three themes and maybe it's a good idea to have the main sessions also around uh, those themes taking up the tone of the community in the beginning of the IGF and then taking up back what has been discussed during the days and the end. And of course there will be uh, yeah, a challenge to put that all then together and, and um, to have a nice parcel afterwards is sort of an, a, a tangible outcome. But yeah, then that will be the task also for us to do. 
Uh, and I think that's a very good idea. And I mean, my understanding, at least of the, the multi-year program, was that it should be maybe a sort of a three-year perspective, giving focus to special themes, but not uh, in the sense that that was be, I mean, fixed and and couldn't be reversed and discussed each year and adapted. Of course, if there are new developments, because indeed we have a very dynamic situation, and we should be able to adapt them. Thanks, and sorry for for leaving now for some time. Thank you, Danielle. Um, just to come to the to the main sessions for a moment and the kind of notion of topping and tailing, um, one of the things we might do, building on Ben's point and, and Daniela's point, is actually, and I'm not sure we can do it in real time there at the IGF, but perhaps immediately afterwards, figure out what are the key messages or what are the um, key questions or um, points of contention um, or a framing of a particular issue that we got from the IGF meeting and then where should that discussion continue? Where should we take it up? Who else should come in and participate in it? Um, so that we actually get some momentum going out of those sessions and accomplish some of the other objectives as well, which is um, broaden the engagement, broaden the outreach, um, and that sort of thing. So, I mean, I think we can, can think about how we might actually um, process beyond kind of the, the immediacy of the, the concluding main sessions. But the multi-year strategic topics was not a multi-year agenda for the totality of the work in the IGF or the totality of any annual program. It was initially when it was um, kind of discussed, and this probably goes back two years to the working group, it was to take two to three topics that we knew um, were substantive topics that were going to take some years and would, would you know, potentially have um, kind of waves of advancement, if you will, not really the right word, but, and try and identify what those streams of work would be so that we could approach other organizations, approach other individuals, bring them in. That was thought to actually allow us to reach out to new organizations, which would also support perhaps reaching out to them as donors, because they would actually have interest in participating in the IGF because of their engagement in the work and, and therefore be interested in, um, in supporting it as well. But it would take up a relatively small number of workshop slots at any one of the IGFs. It wasn't taking away, it wasn't meant to take away significantly from the community aspects or the, or the bottom-up aspect. Um, so, uh, you know, at, at one point, the analysis everybody was using was sort of the security, and they were actually looking at some of the best practice forms from the security, which when the security BPF or cybersecurity BPF was <coughs> first sort of mooted, and even in, I think, the second year, they actually indicated that there was some future work that they'd like to do in future phases. So it was in, it was in that vein which, you know, we would like to explore this particular set of activities this year, and we think that's a precursor to a second set of activities in year three and possibly another one in well, I think I got my years wrong, but in the, in the third year out. So it was in that vein, which would allow us to, to expand each one of the topics and again, reach out to um, new participants. And you know, maybe I'm trying to think if there's a better example, but, but maybe one of the BPF proposals in cybersecurity from two years ago, where I think they specifically laid out, these are things they'd like to do in this year, next year, and, and the year after, was the model. But again, um, it was only a, a small percentage, but we could literally say the IGF is going to examine these particular issues in cybersecurity. We have a three-year program. We're going to focus on this. This is what we expect would be kind of the outcomes of this, year two, year three. Um, and obviously that would be developed um, with the community and the MAG, any one of the topics we might choose. So that was what the, the notion was. Again, two to three topics, multi-year focus. One of the other examples we used for a while was the connecting and enabling the next billions um, as well, which also did something something similar, and that we would expand upon that and, and very consciously, who are the other people that ought to be engaged in this? What would be their reason for engagement? Um, what would be their contribution? Um, and, and plan that out as a, as a fuller um, multi-year program. Again, not taking up a lot of territory in the um, 
workshop program, but able to say that the IGF recognizes and the IGF community recognizes that these issues are really important, really strategic, really topical. This is what we think we can contribute to them, um, and this is how we're going to approach it over the, over the next couple of years. So maybe um, I'll go to Hannah, who's been very patient in the room here, and then Rudolph, and maybe we can come back specifically and say, as I just kind of outlined that particular work, is that something that the, IG, that the MAG thinks would be worth exploring? Again, not specifically on cybersecurity, but two to three topics, multi-year, um, with that level of definition. Um, so we can try and see if there's support for that approach or not. Again, that would... I think the difference is that would actually have the MAG working with the community um, really more specifically um, sort of scoping out a set of, a set of work. Um, Hannah, thank you for your patience, and you have the floor. Thank you very much, Lynn. Uh, Hannah Al-Hashmi from the United Arab Emirates. Um, it's my first time taking the floor in a face-to-face uh, session, so thank you very much uh, to the hosts and all protocol observed. Um, nice to meet you all in person. Um, just to, just to support uh, your your point, Lynn, I think it's it's very good that you laid out the the connection um, between the three streams and potentially using those as a multi-year program. I mean, we have uh, privacy, inclusivity, and security. They're not very different from the three pillars of the United Nations, uh, which are exactly uh, rights, development, and security. So I think they're broad enough buckets uh, that they could essentially be used in a multi-year framework. But I also thought it might be helpful in structuring this discussion to have a couple of timelines in mind. Uh, the IGF itself only has a timeline until 2025. That's six years. Um, you know, the entirety of the 2030 agenda has just 11 years left. Um, but actually, the target for universal access um, in least developed countries actually just has nine months. So I think it's, it's helpful to think, think of those timelines. Um, and to that point, I think Raquel's point of the, the thinking of three-year terms might be helpful just because it fits in well with the, with, uh, the amount of time we have left, uh, really, as, um, as, uh, in, in our work. Um, I also wanted to touch on what, what Ben said about the, the high-level panel on digital cooperation and something that you'd raised as well. And, um, this panel, and we've mentioned this in our in our online sessions as well, um, is not, uh, in in my view, and I'm thinking in also the um, the co-chair's view, uh, meant to be a direct attack on the IGF in any way. Um, I think the scope of the panel goes beyond, uh, to some degree, some of the work that the IGF does. Um, the community that it focuses on is also slightly different. It's focused on models of cooperation, um, and it also has a fixed term. So after June, uh, there'll be a report, um, and yes, we're all eagerly waiting to see it, but they would also be looking for champions to take whatever happens in that report forward. Um, so I think uh, from a member state perspective, it's very important that that report doesn't end up being something on a shelf, and there's certainly a role for the IGF to play in ensuring that whatever recommendations come out or whatever thoughts there are exactly on models of cooperation, exactly on how, uh, when we talk about multi-stakeholder cooperation, what that actually looks like in practice, um, that's something that the IGF could certainly work on, and that all of these comments lead towards the need for strengthened outcomes and outputs. So particularly when we talk about less developed regions, less developed stakeholders, um, Particularly in my region, if you ask, uh, you know, why there isn't more engagement in IGFs, either locally or globally, it's because there isn't a clear understanding of the outcomes and outputs. So perhaps, so when we're talking about marketing, um, perhaps we can think about really making it, uh, making the value add of the IGF clearer, and perhaps structuring um, the outcomes in a way where it is sort of a repository or or something that's that's. Um, uh, for lack of a better term, pedestrian friendly in terms of uh, listing sort of best practices or um, ideas that could be picked up on and built on uh, in, in a strategic way. I think the multi-year framework could help that. I think looking at models of cooperation could also help. Um, but definitely keeping in mind that, that we, we don't have a lot of time, I certainly plus one uh, to the multi-year work. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Those are very, very good comments. Um, and you reminded me of a comment as well. We shared it on uh, a MAG meeting recently, but the Secretary General's office specifically asked um, the IGF to, um, if we would be willing to provide um, sort of space and time to help them advance um, the HLPDC 
um, report once it's done. And, um, and I said I thought the IGF community would be supportive of that. Um, and also that to ensure that it actually had the broadest sort of um, view that um, we could actually look at doing some things online ahead of time with the community broadly, which would um, certainly advance it, you know, well beyond the 3,000 people or so that participate in, in the IGF. So I think it's, it's um, the offer is there. Of course, it's in the absence of actually understanding the report or seeing the report, but assuming um, that there are some um, intersections of Internet governance activities, maybe even implications for the IGF, um, that the IGF would be a reasonable place to, um, and the IGF community, of course, would be a reasonable place to advance those. So um, I think it was excellent that they actually reached out early um, to give us a heads up because they wanted to make sure that we were taking that into account in the planning as we actually pulled the, the program together. Rudolph, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Um, acting as a MAG member, not as a representative of the German government, to be clear. Um, First of all, on the last point that you mentioned, of course, we also are thinking about how to include uh, the findings of the high-level panel into what we call the day zero high-level event. Um, of course, there is a big, big question mark on what is going to be the result of this panel. And only if we have this, we can a little bit more concretely think about how to advance it, if to advance it, and so forth. So we need to have an open and transparent process from this side as well, as is ours. That's the first point. But um, I wanted to support uh, the idea of like the MAG having a more structuring role of the, of the program through the main sessions um, that, that you have outlined. And um, perhaps um, even, even going a little bit beyond because, um, and it has been said that perhaps it's not a good role for the MAG. I think it is an important role for the MAG. And I have been looking up the um, terms of reference of the MAG and it is specifically um, outlined that the MAG should develop the program and the schedule. It to, should determine how to best plan and organize the IGF. So these are very strong uh, words and very strong language. So it's not, uh, so, so that it, it comes down to the question, what does bottom-up approach mean? Does it mean um, everyone puts in proposals and it's just uh, then because it is a bottom-up proposal um, put on, on the agenda of the IGF without any structure. I don't think so. I think as a MAG, we have a responsibility under the um, uh, defined issues that we, have, that we have found together with the community and the call for issues um, to structure the whole exercise in a way that it becomes um, a story to tell in itself to the outside world, not to the inside world. The IGF, there's one, there is one inside world where everyone understands every little reference and every little half sentence. That's okay, but that stays within the community. We have to go outside this community. And in order to do so, and it goes hand in hand with this marketing idea, we have to be structured, transparent, and in a way this requires to take decisions to take decisions of priorities, to uh, merge workshop proposals, to, to, have a, to have a clear idea of what, of what the story of the IGF will be at this particular year. And we can, even not in one year, but in a multi-year. So I, without, wanting, without wanting the MAG to like impose anything, but I think we have a responsibility as a MAG to, to, to look at what's being proposed from the bottom-up approach, and then it is our task, and it is what we have been charged by the Secretary General to advise and to determine a good program that speaks to the outside world. So we, we should start with the main sessions, but we should not stop there, at my, in my point of view. Thank you. Thank you, Rudolf. I didn't mean to smile quite so broadly at the half terms and three words and they do say volumes if you've been doing this for <laughs> for a decade or two and and you're right it is sometimes difficult to translate that to to broader audiences raquel you have the floor thank you very much lynn um actually i think i'm going to echo a lot of what rudolph said <laughs> but uh, let me take uh, perhaps a uh, 
pragmatic angle. I think we need to uh, perhaps save some uh, more time on Thursday after we hear from uh, the high-level panel and we understand what is the extent of their recommendations and what is our role there. Um, I think that's important uh, to also take the opportunity we are here and to have this interface and how much we are going to influence this process after all, because it's not only receiving the information, but how much we are going to make this a joint effort um, to get to the points that, uh, the very legitimate points that the UN Secretary General raised. Um, and uh, on the Mutir approach, I think I've said before, but let me reinforce, I totally um, agree with the, the extended uh, Mutir programming. Um, I think we have a start with the three teams, uh, and that can be combined easily with the efforts we've been doing uh, by shaping the policy questions and framing it also with the community inputs on what is below those uh, those big buckets or whatever we want to call. Uh, that also gives us an opportunity to make a more uh, focused program uh, to be more efficient after all and uh, not re being repetitive with over uh, some of the topics and, and show as um, Rudolf was saying, telling this story and also showing this evolution of the topics. Um, one of the things, it might be up as a reflection, but um, even when the IGF was created per se back in 2005, I mean, many of the uh, tools that we have nowadays and how the internet is perceived is totally different. So there are concerns that needs to be addressed and there is the dynamics that needs to be addressed also at the geopolitical level, the chains that we see. So all of this needs to fit in to make the IGF mean, uh, meaningful and, and, and relevant uh, with its relevant outputs. Um, coming from the technical community, one of the concerns, and that might be more of a thematic also suggestion for this multi-year program, um, and how not only you go down to the issues, but uh, how we perceive this internet governance uh, processes. Uh, coming from the, the technical community, there is always um, a certain uh, confusion on what is the internet per se and where we are talking about, for example, the upper layers or the human behaviors on the internet. Um, and that's a, 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 a recurrent uh, problem our, uh, in our discussions. So I think that should be also uh, tackled at some point. And finally, just the, on the, the outputs, outcomes, the marketing part, um, I think the, the marketing, we, we, we have a clear, at least uh, major support that this uh, needs to evolve. Uh, but on the outcomes and the impact and going beyond, uh, if we take the main session approach at the end, uh, let's say, you know, let's discuss at the end uh, with the main sessions, uh, what are the results of the workshops and how they fit in um, as part of the outputs of the IGF. If we want to go beyond, we need also to identify where we are dispatching those issues, where this is going to be the next step. And I think right now the IGF has this huge community that can get it done. It's just a matter of structuring and taking advantage that we have the time now to make it happen. Thank you, Raquel. We have quite a number in the queue now, which is excellent. Um, ben, you have the floor. Yeah, it's me again. So I'll, I'll try and be a bit briefer this time. Um, to Rudolf um, uh, and, and the idea of the MAG having a, a role to, to devise a story that can be told to the world, um, I just want to say that I think this already began with the efforts that, that Rudolf and Daniela and, and Lynn led us in back in January to come up with three themes with succinct narrative descriptions. That's already setting us on a course to, uh, to have a, a, a clearer story to, to tell to the world and, and to drum up interest in the meeting than when we had eight seemingly disparate themes um, this time last year. Um, and Lynn, thank you for your clarification about um, the proposals behind a multi-year program and there now seems to be a separate idea uh, about setting multi-year themes for the IGF. 
and that's interesting to explore as well and and you are keen to kind of come on people bring ideas and and it'll be interesting to see what the community thinks of that tomorrow but um on your clarification about the specific multi-year program proposal um so it seems it in some ways it's about reimagining and, and bolstering the bpfs um chartering you could see it as chartering bpfs for multiple years but also giving them a bit more backing and, and emphasizing that they should be looking to create kind of formal relationships including uh financial relationships with other organizations and i think that's i'd, I'd certainly support looking further into that i couldn't say uh, I am not coming up with any proposals for what the issue should be, but I, I remember uh, that when the AI and Internet of Things and big data proposal came up last year, uh, my response was, this is too much here. You, you've got to split this. And, and then indeed, that's what they ended up doing. They kind of set out, okay, well, let's do this in two stages and we'll do this in the first year and this in the second year. And as you say, before I got involved with the BPF on cybersecurity, they were already thinking in terms of multi-year work. Um, so I don't know whether that means replacing the BPS with something or, or having something different in tandem, but um, you asked whether there was support for exploring this idea, so I'm offering mine. Thank you. No, th thank you, Ben. Um, one of the other things I think we should consider, because in the discussions in the working group, I think the notion was that the BPS would be supportive of one of those major topics, um, just as we might look um, to see if the DCs were interested in participating or if some of the NRIs were interested in supporting them or, or activities. So it was a way to pull in all the, you know, the various um, activities across the IGF community. And I think the one thing we'd have to do, because, you know, it's hard for one mag to future forward commit subsequent mags, that's where I think it's really important that the community actually supports both, if we did this, a small number of key topics and um, were actively involved in the description of what those topics were, because it's the community that supports the work at the end of the day. Um, you know, and the MAG just tries to facilitate and, and, you know, occasionally lead it. So I think we can get beyond the one MAG future committing a second MAG if we're actually doing that through the community with, with community support and the community says, yes, this is important and this is an appropriate strategy and we want to support that, whether it's through DCs, BPFs, NRIs, or through, um, you know, additional working groups or structures as well. So from my mind, this is actually an opportunity for us to pull in the community much more deeply into those strategic topics um, than, you know, kind of a reset every year fully in the program. I see Mary nodding her head in the background, which I like always. <laughs> um, let's see, Susan, Susan Chalmers, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, I first would like to um, support uh, the comments of Rudy and Rudolph and um, Raquel on uh, the high-level panel report. I think it would be useful to first understand what the the findings are and the recommendations are, um, and then we'll be best placed to understand how to incorporate that within the program. Um, on the nature of outputs, uh, again, I, and at the expense of perhaps repeating myself, I do think that over, um, well, since 2006, all of the discussions in the MAG, there, and within the IGF events themselves, there are certainly gems and um, um, different types of recommendations, different uh, uh, explanations of policy approaches to various issues. I would agree with um, the previous comments that uh, Ben had mentioned about funding the development of these outputs, uh, being able to um, package and promote these, these outputs. Um, again, I do not think it's a lack of uh, quality of discussion. Um, uh, but I, I, do, I think it's, it's the, um, how these outputs are formatted and uh, promoted, really, that should be the focus. Um, and uh, lastly, on the, the role of the MAG, I think that um, the place where the MAG can really shine in helping to shape the narrative, um, echoing 
certain comments that have come before are in the main sessions and um, MAG members have organized main sessions in different ways before. Um, there's been uh, more open approaches, for example, com negotiating the format of the main sessions completely openly with the community using a Google Doc. Um, there have been um, less open approaches, which um, it's within the prerogative of the MAG, so that's okay too. Um, uh, but I guess one question I had, just a very practical one. Um, is when in the cycle this year we will be working on those main sessions. I see that we have a strategic discussion teed up for this afternoon, but I was just wondering when we decide and work on those main sessions, are we expecting to do that this meeting, um, during a virtual meeting, or at, at the third meeting? Uh, thank you. All three. <laughs> I think we have to, we clearly have to have um, a vision of what we want to do with the main sessions leaving this meeting. Um, and depending on what that discussion is, I think would determine how far we can advance on them in this meeting. And it's pretty clear that we'll have to take them forward to some virtual meetings and hopefully be ready to pretty much conclude the kind of structure in the, in the meeting in Berlin is the timetable I think everybody's working towards. Venny, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. Um, I I have a question on the uh, not a question, I have a comment on the uh, part of the discussion that we had on the high-level panel for, on digital cooperation, uh, and this comes back to something we we also raised in our January meeting uh, when we also had uh, comments about it. So, from the perspective of the time we will be done with our June meeting before the high-level panel issues their report, I guess it will be a report. Uh, and, and even if we are done, even if they are done just a little bit before that, we may not have enough time to actually look into it. But the question is rather uh, going into a, into a line, I mean, going into the same comments that we got in January about, you know, uh, the IGF should not discuss that much of cyber because it will be discussed at the UN. I mean, the high-level panel is set up by the Secretary General. Uh, the IGF is set up by the General Assembly uh, and by the WISIS before that, so, so to speak. So I'm, I'm a little bit concerned that we keep on going back to the same point, which is we have to take into account what this panel will be saying or um, uh, shouldn't it be in a way, sh uh, when it was established, it was mentioned that whatever conclusions, recommendations it comes with, it will not touch on existing uh, structure, including, I guess, the IGF. So we should probably be more careful in how we approach this question because I don't want to spend too much time on the panel deliver I mean the panel um, report rather we should probably have a uh, report from the panel like Jovan will be coming here you said on uh, Thursday or tomorrow uh, and uh, he will tell us what's the current status but still we wouldn't know what's happening until our June meeting and we can be informed about it and they can have probably a workshop if they put a workshop proposal, but I'm, I'm a little bit worried that we are putting too much uh, attention to this, and we may uh, not put enough attention to um, other topics that people from around the world are providing to us, you know, through workshop proposals and BPFs, etc. So I, I'm just being a kind of playing devil's advocate, if you will, or uh, not to, to get driven into a discussion of, a, of another group report since we have a lot on our agenda and we will have probably hundreds of <coughs> workshop proposals to review and uh, make sure that, you know, they all follow the requirements that we have, etc., etc. Thank you, Vinny. I mean, I think it's, it's good advice to make sure that we're really focused on the work that the MAG is uniquely kind of here to do. Um, and I, I, don't, I actually don't think so far we're focusing inappropriately on the HLPDC. 
because I think one of our big takeaways should be the HLPDC is there because some set of individuals, some member states within the UN, think that there's um, a need to review digital cooperation, both in the context of is the UN doing all it can to facilitate and support those ideas and are the various sort of structures and forums that are engaged in some of these doing everything. I'm not sure I <laughs> interpret your quote the same way you did or even that the quote is, is the same with respect to not touch on other organizations. I think specifically it was to look at all the activities, which includes organizations, processes, and institutions, and identify, um, you know, where there were opportunities. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think that was how I kind of interpreted that, that set. And I think from some of the, the conversations in um, Ambassador Gill, and I don't know if Chengad has any more information, because of course he was seconded to the secretary for a period of time, and may still have half a substantive foot <laughs> in that um, in that camp but I mean I I would suspect that at the end of the day um, there are some implications for internet governance um, in which case I think there would be implications for the IGF but your main point which is we shouldn't over concentrate or over focus on that is absolutely right and I I don't I don't think we um, I don't think we are uh, Mary you have the floor Thank you, uh, the chair. My name is Mary Uduma from Nigeria. Um, first, uh, since I'm taking the floor for the first time, I, w I want to say welcome to everyone, and um, I hope we are having the cool, fine, the weather very good. Uh, it's cold for me. OK, having said that, um, <laughs> I want to raise about three points. One is the multi-year strategic plan is yes for me because it's necessary for us to have direction or roadmap, roadmap or have a focus for the next three years, whether it's for this present uh, MAG or the incoming or the now. MAG is continuum. So if we develop that. Uh, secondly is that we are we are better off this year because we have developed, we have, we have a focus. And the three themes we have will be a starting point for us to continue with the uh, strategic roadmap or direction. It could be adjusted yearly as the, as the dynamics of IG issues dictates. So every year we adjust that. But we have a focus and it's good planning for us. Uh, the second thing I want to mention is that these three uh, focus themes, they cut across to the multi-sector, multidisciplinary, and um, it, it, it brings it will bring uh, uh, new voices, new participants to the IGF process, which I think is very good if we continue to develop that. And for that, I think uh, we are on the on the, on on the on on correct map, road map. Um, the third thing I want to talk about is the day zero high level panel. I want us to consider what would such people be expecting from from IGF, and uh, their expectation should be our concern. What do we want to communicate to them? And that should be another concern of us. What exactly? Uh, just like Veni said, we are not going to communicate what uh, another group will communicate to them. We will look at our three main focus and have to bring them to accept that these are very, very critical areas of consideration when you think about internet development in every country, in every sector, in every stakeholder group. So th that, that's another thing. Then what should they take away? So those are things that I think should preoccupy our time for us to develop do, 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 those uh, things. And then um, marketing, I know that if we, if we develop this multi-year properly and we communicate properly, then we would be able to look at how we raise finances from those new sectors, new commerce, the other dis discipline that 
the Secretary General is asking us to reach out to. So I want to support all the all the comments that we have received here, especially the explanation that uh, the chair has been given to us. And uh, if you, uh, he, she has said, she has heard me nodding. I've been nodding because I agree with most of the things that she has said. So um, I think we are on the right path. And then we should also look at what and what we should present that would make our new strategy acceptable and uh, understood by the newcomers. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. And thank you for a, a clear statement of, of your position. Um, I'm happy it's supportive, of course, but your position on the question that's in front of the room. Um, so let me um, go to Ananja and then see if we can um, see what the next step is with respect to this topic and then I'll try to move to another one. Ananja, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, one of the issues for a strategic discussion that is uh, strengthening, uh, I mean, increasing participation uh, that uh, um, st increasing stakeholder engagement and inclusion. So I see that uh, this is widening, actually. When we have uh, national IGFs, uh, then uh, it's focused only in the capital, you know. Only one district, a small community. The same community everywhere, in all meetings, in all programs like that. So we're not able to, you know, bring people outside uh, the geographical region. So how can we, you know, bring these people? One problem is uh, online system cannot be developed. It's uh, very complicated. And uh, another is uh, the geographical, uh, you know, uh, difficulties, very remote areas, and uh, the local governments, they have started, you know, taxing internet per subscriber. So this widening uh, inclusion is, is a very serious concern uh, in countries like ours. So is it the same kind of things that is happening in other countries or uh, this national IGF, how does it work? That's a very serious question. Thank you. It's a serious question and a really serious um, sort of topic. Um, and I'm actually wondering if maybe a way to do that is maybe through one of the NRI calls where um, you actually see first if there are sort of shared experiences. And I'm sure there are countries with the same um, set of issues or concerns and see what um, you know, either their suggestions have been to try and address that or, you know, whether or not there's something that you could suggest that you think would help to, to, to close it. Um, I don't know, I'm looking to Anya as the NRI focal point to see if that's a sensible thing or is there a different way to, um, to advance Well, thank it. you very much and for excellent question. I think that's actually the most appropriate approach that we bring this important matter to the NRI's network and uh, consult the NRI's. Um, I, I also think some of the MAG members are affiliated with the NRI, so they could be actually in better position to speak than me about the issue of inclusion of everyone in the processes. But I know, for example, Titi is here that the Italian IGF, it's been a while since it's been in Rome. I think this last year and this year, I, mm -hmm. I believe it will be there. But I know they're touring the country. The South African IGF will tell you also an excellent uh, proposal of this year where they're going to remote areas manually because you cannot reach those people online, obviously because they're offline of the lack of infrastructure. The IGF USA will tell you the same. They're basically touring the country, having a couple of points mm -hmm. uh, where they're trying to uh, reach people that are maybe not even aware that there's something called the Internet mm -hmm. Governance mm -hmm. and to involve them and so on. There are a couple of more examples. CEDIC, for example, recently went to Albania to do the yeah. same thing. So, so yes, I do hear some inputs behind me, so maybe the best would be actually if the colleagues that are involved with the NRIs could speak. Thank you. I think that's great. I think there were a lot of good, good um, comments you just made as well. And, you know, if we do go forward with two or three main strategic topics, um, that might actually facilitate um, a lot of uh, input from the NRIs as well. If they have a longer horizon, um, then you can actually use a longer process and different processes to actually pull in, um, you know, reflections onto, into that discussion as well. So they're still participating at, at a global as well as a, 
a local level. Um, the screen has gone dark up here, but Arsene, you have the floor. Yeah, um, it's on the same on the same issue that was read by by Ananda and then um, complemented by by Anya. I just wanted to to throw out that for the Congo IGF. Of course, we have so many internal issues uh, currently, but we also have a plan to have uh, the this year's IGF out of Kinshasa, which is the, the main capital city, for a Congo which has like a size of a continent by itself. Uh, most of those discussions are happening in the capital city, but um, we're looking into having it in Goma, Goma, which is on the eastern side uh, for the IGF this year. I think this is one of the ways uh, to, to make sure discussions um, on IG issues are being attended by many other people from across the country, not only those who are able uh, to, go, to go to Kinshasa. But uh, the issue of uh, online participation as well has always been a challenge, be it on the global level, uh, the global IGF, even on the national level. Because uh, I would like probably to say thanks to, to you know to the ISOC for for making it possible for most can, from for most countries whenever they are having their their NRI, uh, ISOC has been uh, of great support you know in providing live stream for most of these. But uh, in a country like mine, where only up to 15 percent of people are having access to the internet. It's really hard, you know, to rely on the on the on the online participation system, and so uh, going into different uh, cities is uh, the best approach, I think. No, thank you, Arsene. Very very helpful comments. Mary, you have the floor. Okay, thank you, uh, Mary. Again, uh, I just want to respond to the uh, question of getting to the grassroots, and when we held our. 2015 IGF, where we, we, this was raised, and uh, we decided to create what we call zonal, subzonal. So, at that zonal level, we have gone to about three zones since we started, or four zones since we started. Uh, we have gone to uh, state governments in Nigeria are, you know, willing to host the IGF. So we are not only in the capital. So uh, you could also, since some of us have a very large country, we could also consider having a sub thing, a sub uh, meeting that will bring together those at the local level to be able to contribute to the work of the IGF and uh, the process. Uh, that's what I wanted to share. Thank you. That's another very good idea. So there's clearly lots of creativity. <laughs> And energy here in the um, in the broad community. So that was good. Thank you, Mary. Miguel, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Chair, for giving me the floor. It's Miguel Candia from Paraguay, MAG member. And uh, good morning, everybody. It's the first time I take the floor. So I'll just thank everybody for their hard work and particularly Germany for the organization. Uh, just a couple of things. When, uh, the first one with the Taking into account what we are discussing now, a couple of suggestions I myself made through the national initiative of Paraguay, that is the uh, the rotation of the of the meeting of the IG, Paraguayan IGF. Uh, that is, uh, th this year uh, doesn't have a a city yet, but we are trying to move it from Asuncion, depending on how we can arrange the logisticals. It's a bit hard always, but. Uh, we're trying to do it. Uh, at least we have the idea of, of doing it. And the other is um, uh, to uh, have local hubs at the same time as the national um, IGF. So we are trying to have maybe a smaller group of people on, in different cities uh, discussing the same things. We are discussing either the same agenda or uh, the same point in a, in an online way, you know. And the other uh, is that we had um, this is last year's idea, but we are trying to put it into the national uh, budget. Is to have uh, some sort of not scholarship, but you know, uh, support for for individuals from different different parts of the country. 
uh, that would be interested in, in participating in the IGF if it is in Asuncion. So uh, these are efforts we are trying to, to put in, um, in action in order to have more participation and more, and particularly for, for people to know better what the IGF is doing both at the national and global level because you, you have feedback from both. And uh, it is just a comment, uh, but not more of a comment, an anecdote. Just before coming here, I was uh, attending a, a workshop on the dangers on online gaming in, in our Congress. And at the, at the time when they opened the floor, I, I started to talk about the IGF. And I noticed that uh, the, the representatives, they knew nothing about the, the IGF, the national one, not even talking about the global one. But uh, it, it was an opportunity to, to, to make them understand, to make them known, uh, to make them know what we are doing and that we are involved as a country. So uh, one other thing is just to pretty much invite, uh, not, I mean, in the national level, make the effort to invite congressmen from different parties and with different visions because they, they are the ones taking afterwards uh, the issues to the Congress and to the uh, and making it into law. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. No, thank you. Thank you, Miguel. Um, very interesting comments. I'm going to go to Lucien and then I'm going to try and kind of put a proposal together to try and move this multi-year topic um, discussion forward so um, everybody can get their thoughts together. And Lucien, you have the floor. Hi, everyone. Uh, Lucien Castex from France. Uh, I wanted to speak as a co-chair of the French NRI uh, to say that also in France we have the problem of involving local communities outside of Paris, obviously, and the Ile-de-France region. And uh, this year, uh, IGF France will be held in Paris, but we plan to have uh, local hubs in other cities to obviously improve uh, participation and also um, basically to improve online uh, participation by having dedicated moderators and experts um, to facilitate uh, online participation, which is obviously a challenge. Um, going back to the multi-year framework, I wanted to say that I fully support uh, this way forward because it's a way of achieving uh, basically tangible outcomes. Um, I also agree uh, with Mary as it concerns the thematic focus because uh, obviously we need to adapt them yearly, but it's quite a good base to, to work with. And um, I wanted to stress out, as I had before, that obviously we have 11 years uh, left on the, on the UN agenda, and it could be a great idea to, you know, to implement uh, IGF 2030 agenda SDGs and all in a in a timely fashion and the next uh, edition. Thank you. We'll declare our own timetable. <laughs> Thank you, Lucien. Um, I'm going to tell you what my sort of assumption is, and then a suggestion for processing the work, and then I'll come back and test the assumption <laughs> with everybody here. Um, but if I look around the room, I've um, either seen um, body language, and I apologize to those people that are participating remotely, because I obviously can't see your body language, but, but please, um, any MAG members that are participating remotely that want to come in, um, please, please do come in. I hope we fix the audio problems to date. But, um, and the comments that have actually been made um, seem to be supportive for um, trying to evaluate um, small number, two to three, multi-year strategic topics. Um, so to you, that's my assumption. I want to say if that's true, and I'll come back and test that in a moment with everybody. What I think we could do is um, ask for a, a subset of the MAG. I would propose not a formal working group structure because I think a lot of this discussion has taken place in various working groups over the last couple of years, and we just kind of need to get a proposal together, which actually would look at um, doesn't even need to declare the topics, but what this process would look like and what the purpose of it would be and um, how it would be um, structured, um, taking into consideration um, appropriate consultations with the community, 
and with all the intercessional activities, both in terms of this as, a, as an approach and then ultimately the specific topics. I don't think it's actually a huge lift to, to, to document that or write that because of the work that's been done in this discussion over the last couple of years. But I think, um, it's, as the working group said, it's time that these things come out of the working group, come to the MAG, and, and to the community. So um, if that was true, we would look for a small group of people, um, appropriately multi-stakeholder and appropriately diverse regionally, et cetera, um, to build a proposal um, that would suggest that um, the MAG working with the community and all the intercessional activities and the NRIs um, identify a process that would establish two to three uh, strategic topics with multi-year um, uh, sets of activities. There's a different word I had in my mind, but I couldn't find it at the moment. Um, and a process for bringing that forward appropriately across the community for support. I mean, so the question specifically to the MAG is, is there support for a, a, a small kind of ad hoc um, working group process to go away and write that proposal up and bring it appropriately to the community and to the MAG for review. So, I mean, again, I see heads nodding on the floor. I, I haven't actually logged into the chat, so I'm not sure which MAG members are, are online. Um, if there's anybody who wants to come in online <laughs> for that, we'll give them a moment to, to do that or to put a comment in the chat room, which maybe somebody can inform me of. And is there anybody who um, wants to suggest a different approach or object to that as an approach? So the next question would be um, who wants to support that activity? And I will take that um, to the list so that we're not losing um, valuable face-to-face -face time. Um, so we will find a way to capture what the specific ask is um, at its briefest. It is um, bring a, a proposal forward for review with the MAG and the community that would actually look at um, two to three years, strategic topics, multi-year focus. And again, some of the kind of models for that work would either be some of the BPF submissions in the past, um, notably the cybersecurity and the CENB work as well. So um, thank you to everybody for um, pressing on with that um, that discussion. Um, we have sort of 15 minutes left here. Um, there were a couple of uh, other areas which came up. One, one was as we talk about improving current outputs. There are some things we can do, I think, to continue building on last year's process where we tried to engage all the workshop organizers earlier in the process. So we've asked people to identify the policy questions or specifically what is it you're trying to advance by having this workshop at the IGF. Um, we asked them to submit a series of steps um, which actually identified that. So obviously they have their workshop submission process, but then a few weeks this is roughly right, not, a few weeks. Sorry. not entirely mm -hmm. accurate, but a few weeks before the IGF itself, we asked the um, organizers to um, clarify again their speakers, the policy questions, um, sort of expected topics or outputs they were looking for. And then exiting the meeting, um, they were meant to share some key messages, and then they had a week to actually get their full workshop report in. Um, I think we should go away and look at that process and figure out what else we can do to, to um, kind of um, support that. I think there are two specific areas I'd like to just some, some thoughts on a little bit. One suggestion, maybe there's three. There were some suggestions made um, last year, but they came in quite late, so we weren't able to implement them for last year. But one was when um, we're walking into the room on the screen, have the workshop title and number and the policy question on the screen so that people were reminded of why they're there. They're there to help advance that particular issue, that particular policy question, that it would focus the discussion. That was one thing that 
and people said would just be a, a good kind of focusing element. Um, there was also um, a suggestion that um, we set up a tool within the Secretariat that would allow um, people that have participated in those workshops to respond, and this actually came out of a discussion with Yves Mathieu from um, Mission Publique, said, if you just asked everybody on this particular topic, um, what do you think the IGF could concretely impact or affect or accomplish next year on this topic? Um, and I mean, it's kind of an interesting question because it's pretty concrete, it's time focused, it's specifically focused on what the IGF community could actually accomplish. But it also then gave everybody that participated in that discussion the opportunity to share their thoughts. Whereas if you're in a room with a few hundred people, even if you leave 30 minutes for questions, you're getting comments from 10 people maybe. Um, so it was a way to get everybody kind of engaged sort of deeply in the topic, know that they were actually going to have a, a voice and an opinion, and hopefully give some additional kind of concrete direction to the, the community, the MAG, in terms of things that they thought we could do or were of interest. So there's, I mean, and I throw those out only because I think if we actually think um, kind of a little, I don't know if, if the word is really creatively or what, but <coughs> about some other things we could do that are triggers that would help the discussions in the room really focus and, and try to work towards a more concrete um, output would be helpful. Um, the other um, thing that I think is a, a, a kind of an a, request or a desire on the part of some would be to find a way to um, sort of ascribe, and I'm saying this word with, I have to tell you, lots of trepidation, <laughs> ascribe an IGF view to the discussion that was held. Um, and I don't think it needs to be an IGF view. Um, we've all had these discussions at some pain a few years ago. Um, but what, the, what a few of the NRI processes do, again, as I said earlier, is they have repeters in the room who actually try and say, here were the two or three main findings from the room. Um, and in doing so, they ask people to say, is that what we all think we heard? Um, and also um, allow them to capture whether or not there was sort of agreement on a particular direction or a particular problem statement, or whether there was disagreement. But something that, that gave a profile, if you will, to the discussion in the room that they could take away and say. Um, it clearly wouldn't be an IGF view, because not any one of these sessions are fully representative of the IGF, and we've never been certain how we even define the IGF. Um, but is there um, an appetite for trying to look at a different way to capture and validate or substantiate um, the discussions that were in the room that would actually be more helpful than it was said, it was stated, somebody commented. Which, you know, when you share some of those things with people that aren't participating in the process, it, it, it doesn't really do much at all, frankly. You know, they can get that from reading a Newsweek article or a, their Spiegel article or something. Um, you know, so I, I don't know, I'll stop right there, but I think when we think about outputs, it's not just better capturing the outputs we have, and it's not making them easier to find on the website, and it's not better marketing for them. I think concretely we need to produce better outputs from the activities in the IGF, and it needs to start there, and all those other things need to, to happen. So I will um, stop there. I see we have Yuta and Chennai in the... Um, you know, if I had my druthers, what I would do is come back after lunch with a discussion on what else we can do to actually concretely improve the outputs um, and the, the kind of discussions and takeaways in the room. If there's support for some other discussion in the room, then we can, can, can entertain that and we'll let the room decide where they go from there. Um, Yuta, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn, for giving me the floor. I, I, my, my thoughts were around not the output, but the input we already get. And uh, I do think that we could probably also focus on the policy questions that we get from the community by the end of next week. I do think we will have a broad, uh, uh, and a lot of things that will be in that policy questions. I, I was considering whether it would be possible to have an analysis of all the policy questions, not only those that 
will be in the workshop proposals that we accept afterwards, because I do think there might be a lot of value in policy questions phrased by workshop submitters, although their workshops do not come through, probably due to diversity reasons or whatsoever, or format or whatsoever. So there is so much wealth, I assume, will be in, in the policy questions that doing an analysis of all the policy questions and then shaping the focus. And probably we could also address uh, some of the policy questions in the main sessions that we have to decide on as well. So that's my suggestion. Thank you. No, thank you, you to this very good. Let me ask Lewis quickly. Lewis, would it be, would we be able to capture the policy questions by tag and aggregate them so that we could say these were all the policy questions under this particular tag and send that out as a separate extract? I mean, the only point with the policy questions is that they are not uh, structured, so we can't just get text from them, but we can do, of course, any kind of filtering now with that, yes. I did think that was the way Lewis had set it up, so... Um, and we'll, we'll talk to the Secretariat after about um, when and, and how. I think we're probably looking for two filters, ultimately. One is of all the workshops, to Yuta's point, and then subsequently um, those that are selected. But that would be a second step. Chennai, you have the floor. Um, thank you very much, Lynn. I think my suggestion is more to do with participating in these spaces as a young person. And also, I mean, you get your proposal accepted, but in order for you to steer the outputs that IGF desires, you also need to have the capacity to actually hold the conversation, in particular if you are the moderator. So I think um, uh, it's a suggestion and a question. The qu first question is what happens in order to support people who've been selected into to have panels, especially when we know that these are first-time presenters or in areas that we were calling that they don't have the capacity to actually hold the workshop. So that's the first question. And then the second question, I actually would like to suggest that, um, I think I was at the Internet Freedom Festival last week, and what I saw they did is with everyone who was coming to facilitate, they actually had a handbook for all of the facilitators with their main aim saying, we want to ensure that there is a conversation and that you engage the room. So I think having those guidelines set up from the very beginning to pe for people to actually say, um, this is what I'm trying to achieve, it can be useful. I've been on panels where, and in rooms where the, pan the moderator becomes the fifth panelist or there's another moderator who steps up from the floor because they can't hold the conversation. So I think if you want to ensure that good outputs come out, it starts from the prep into actually getting them into the room. So I would like to suggest perhaps having that kind of document set up, especially for people who've been in MAG for, like, you know, they're in the third terms. They know exactly what makes a session successful. And I would like to support where I can by sharing resources of people who've provided support for um, moderators and panels. Those are excellent points, um, Chennai, and I think we can look at the guidelines we actually give and w would very much appreciate um, your view on them. And I know in the past we have had kind of mentorship capabilities. I'm not sure I'd say it was sort of a full program, but, but MAG members did volunteer to be available as a resource to mentor. Maybe we can um, pull that out again and, and um, buff it up if we need to. <laughs> uh, Susan Chalmers. Susan, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, just responding to uh, your your most recent comments, and um, I think the question that you raise um, might be worthy of a longer discussion before um, just before the lunch hour. But um, it seems to me that we're now kind of talking about the nature of the um, the workshops and the sessions, and whether or not. It seems to me that what's being proposed is a question of whether or not to kind of urge people towards consensus in these sessions. No? Okay. Perhaps I misunderstood, but um, I mean, just having um, an IGF view or a profile, just the nature of reporting, um, I think from where I stand, part of the value of the um, the IGF workshops is being able to have a diversity and a plurality of opinion and different views. And maybe we could state it in a way that's not in the passive voice, but it, ensuring that those different perspectives are reflected and the different analyses are um, 
are put through and if there's a different way to package that in the report um, I think that we should certainly have a longer discussion about it but um, um, so I, I just think that ensuring that we have we're not kind of gearing ourselves when we're talking about outputs we're not gearing ourselves towards a discussion of finding um, consensus position but being able to um, just reflect the nature of the discussion in general and in a more neutral way, I think, um, would be useful. Thank you. Yeah, so just to be clear, I mean, I, I was absolutely not suggesting the individual sessions try to urge people toward consensus. And in fact, one of the things we said this year was we wanted the workshop organizers to really focus on getting diverse viewpoints into the room so that we actually had a discussion. Um, I, what I'm looking for is to capture that discussion in a way that either shows what the points were supporting one view or the other, but something more than, you know, literally it was stated that or, um, and there are ways to do that. And if we, if the, we set up the policy questions and it, there actually is a robust debate or discussion in the room, then those different viewpoints will come out and it would capture those. But I think to the extent we can say, you know, you know, there was some level of agreement on this point and vast disagreement on this, and here's where they uh, converge or, or diverge would, would be useful information. What's mostly in, in, helpful is the arguments, <laughs> you know, for or against or, or supporting a point as opposed to the opinions. But I, I don't know how we, we get that out when they're just sort of individual with stated sort of statements. Um, we'll go to Ben on the floor and then... Thank you. Um, it was just a, a quick point to to respond to Chennai, um, to appreciate the the reminder that not everyone who puts in a workshop proposal will will feel confident or experienced in in how they would manage and and organise that session once it's been approved, and um, that the idea of a mentor, um, I think, is really good. So maybe that's when people are told that their workshop has been approved they could they could be invited to if do they have any interest in having uh, a mentor from the mag in giving them any advice about how to organize their session i appreciate well we don't know how many workshop sessions there are if we're going parallel with 2017 there would be 100 sessions and there are just over 50 mag members and i don't expect every mag member would volunteer and so you know, there probably isn't the resources for every workshop to be supported but i don't think every workshop organizer wants a mag member telling them advising them so um i think it's it's worth asking that question and expressing it as do you have interest because it's it's not a promise we can make but uh, i would certainly put my hand up come july um you know if the secretariat circulated a list and said the following would like some interest uh, who would like to match up and be a mentor thank you ben um that did you have a comment tonight okay i'm gonna come in quickly and then we'll have to break yeah i just want to add on to that that i do understand that mentorship is also very exhausting so i think perhaps just um having a resource that people can pull up quickly to read prior to like this is what to expect for you as, from you as we moderate would also be a useful resource to have no, thank you. And I think we do have some of those materials available, but I'm sure they can be um, in, improved. Um, so we need to break. I know a number of people have other meetings scheduled um, right now. Um, and there's a donors meeting um, at 1.30, I guess, as well, which um, is they're normally open if other people want to come in. What room? G3. G3. Uh, I'll let... I'm one of the ones that have another meeting at once. I can just step out. So I will let Chengatai tell you where room G3 is. When we come back at, at um, 3 o'clock, um, we'll pick up this discussion, because I hadn't intended to open and close it before lunch, um, assuming the MAG actually has interest in pursuing this discussion. If the, we have an hour left in the strategic, if there's another strategic discussion or component we'd like to move forward, then we should get that on the floor quite quickly. And um, But thank you very much, everybody, for staying with this conversation this morning. Benny, you have a quick? Uh, just, is, is the donor meeting one hour? I think it has to be one hour because people are going to need time to get back here and get lunch. And so 1.30 to 2.30? Yeah, yes.
we, we had the same problem last time because uh, we have 30 minutes before and after which is not the best usage of time for lunch could we start it 15 minutes earlier or later so that we have 45 minutes for lunch uh, that would have been an excellent suggestion when I sent out the email and uh, you replied but now we have people online who might join yeah <laughs> You could probably stretch it from 1.30 to 2.45 if that makes you feel better, Benny. 